Tonight's meeting of the Metropolitan Nashville and Davidson County Council is coming to you live from the council chambers at the historic Metro Courthouse. It's a public affairs presentation of the Metro Nashville Network. Good evening, everyone. I'm Pat Nolan, your announcer for this program. Tonight, the 15th Metropolitan Council holds its 49th business meeting of a four-year term. This is the 19th council meeting of 2021. Tonight's council agenda is lengthy, 51 pages long, including 130 pieces of legislation. The agenda also includes a council debate on a proposed rule change, 40 zoning ordinances on public hearing, 20 regular resolutions, 39 first reading bills, 17 reading bills on second reading bills on, of legislation up tonight, and 14 ordinances on third and final reading. There are also 20 appointments or reappointments to various city boards and commissions up tonight, including nine of the city's plumbing and electrical examiners appeals board alone. It's one of the longest lists of appointments I have ever seen on a council agenda. Not all are mayoral appointments. Some are nominations or elections the council conducts, including some of its own members serving on the city's planning and traffic and parking commissions. The agenda also includes a confirmation of the city's new finance director, Ms. Kelly Flannery. Uh, one other general note you may notice as the meeting goes on tonight that several different council meetings are handle, members are handling legislation tonight. That's because the council has rotated its committee chairs as it does every year. They've also reduced the number of committees and renamed a few of them. Due to the continuing high number and spread of COVID-19 infections in the, with the Delta variant, the Metro Health Department has reinstated a mask mandate some weeks ago in all city-owned buildings, so everyone here tonight will again be wearing masks. One of the most significant pieces of legislation before the Council up tonight concerns reinstating a mask mandate in all public spaces in Nashville. The Council at its last meeting two weeks ago approved such an ordinance on the second of three readings. For final approval night, Bill 2021-872 must receive 21 votes for final approval. That's exactly the same number of votes it received at the last meeting. Any number less than that, and the bill fails. There are a couple of amendments being offered to the bill tonight. One of them's a late one, which may not be able to get on the floor, but one of them would end the mask mandate at the end of this year. The other would require the mask mandate to stay in place until 85% of all the residents in Davidson County are fully vaccinated. Another area of ongoing concern, uh, by the way, before get, getting back to the uh, mask mandate, there are also questions about whether the bill will be passing tonight because the number of virus cases and hospitalizations have been declining over the last two weeks. Metro Health Board earlier declined the council resolution to mandate impose such a mandate. Metro Health Director Dr. Gill Wright says everyone getting vaccinated is the best way to fight, the better way to fight COVID-19. Another area of controversy tonight before the council on a bill on second reading is the regulation of tourist entertainment vehicles downtown. Despite a state law that seems to prohibit local regulation, uh, the bill before the council tonight, BL 2021 9-11, now has 27 of the 40 council members as sponsors, so it looks like it is headed towards passing. It would call a, cause a comprehensive makeover of the city's oversight board, regulating and licensing tourist vehicles. The changes would also include a ban on the possession or consumption of all alcoholic beverages in any tourist entertainment vehicle that is not fully enclosed while they're in operation. Support for the change also seems to be growing with students at Hume Fog Magnet High School, located right in the middle of the tourist district downtown, complaining about the noise and safety downtown. Also on Sunday, a tourist lost control of one of the scooters downtown and was killed after hitting a large truck. That just adds to the concern about what's going on in the area. 40 bills on public hearing are again a sign that Nashville's growth and development remain robust. If you look at the agenda, you will see something different. A new state law requires that if a building materials are restricted in a new development, it must be spelled out in capital letters in the bill. That impacts about 25% of the bills on public hearing tonight. Among resolutions before the council, RS 2021 would authorize a cost and feasibility study for Metro to take over maintenance of all state routes in Davidson County, including litter and grass pickup, uh, grass mowing. Supporters believe this will streamline success. There is an amendment to this bill tonight that would say we'd only, we don't, Metro would only look at taking over some of the state roads. Doesn't it indicate which ones it would take over, which ones it would not. We'd also ask for the city to report back to them with this feasibility study by the end of February. In the area of affordable housing under RS 2021-1166, the council will accept a $3 million contribution from the Congress group. 2.5 million of that money will go to the city's Barnes Fund, and a half million will go to the still to be formed nonprofit entity for the benefit of Wolf Park. In terms of dealing with the pandemic under resolution 2021-1169, the council is being asked to use over just over $900,000 of the city's community development block grant funds to reimburse the fairgrounds Nashville and the municipal auditorium for costs related to those facilities being used as homeless facilities during the pandemic. Homeless shelters, I should say. Council will accept COVID-19 grants to combat the virus from the Federal American Rescue Program. One bill increases by $1.6 million, a grant from the Department of Human Services, another from the Citizen Disease Control is for an extra $1 million more to address COVID-19 health disparities in the Nashville area. In non-COVID-related grants, the Council will consider a $75,000 grant from the National Endowment for the Arts, 
combined with an equal match for the city, would support an art residency program in North Nashville, along with permanent lighting for public art works in that area. Under moralizing resolutions, the council will salute retiring Judge Bill Higgins after 50 years of public service. The council will also honor the lives of the late Tennessee Supreme Court Chief Justice Cornelia Clark and Trevecca Nazarene University President Dr. Homer J. Adams. The council will also recognize October as Italian Heritage Month. On second reading, the council will consider BL 2021-784 to expand zoning districts allowing detached assess accessible dwelling units, DADAYU overlays. Proponents see as a way to increase the supply of affordable housing. Other council members are not so sure the Metro Planning Commission has disapproved the ordinance before the council fight. Under Bill 2021-867, any vehicle with, any length in, with a length of in excess of 20 feet or a dump truck of more than 54,000 pounds of gross weight will be prohibited on any street or alley within the jurisdiction of Metro between sunrise and sunset. The extension of the current laws after continued complaints about large vehicles being parked in their neighborhood. Finally, Ordinance BL 2021-912 would create an inclusionary housing incentive program. Details are still to be worked out, but those eligible projects under that, developers of new or, or workforce, new affordable or workforce housing in downtown would receive a height bonus. It's a financial bonus. The eligibility to qualify and how much the financial bonus would be would still be up to the Metro Planning and Finance Departments in consultation with the property assessor. It would also be subject to appropriation by the council. If you want to follow tonight's council meeting as it progresses, you can find the agenda and a staff analysis online. You can go to the Metro Council portion of the Nashville.gov website, then the Legislative Information Center. We'll be placing the numbers of the bill on the screen when they come up for consideration tonight so you can follow along and keep up with where we are in the meeting agenda. Let's go now to Vice Mayor Jim Shulman. He'll gavel tonight's council meeting to order shortly. Mm-hmm. So will the meeting please come to order? We welcome you to the Metro Council. Today is Tuesday, October the 5th, 2021. Will all members of the council as well as the public please rise for the invocation. Remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Invocation this evening will be offered by Deacon Harry Guess of the St. Vincent de Paul Catholic Church, a guest of Council Member Jennifer Gamble. Let us join together in spirit and prayer. Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed your glory to all nations and especially bless this nation. God of power and might, wisdom and justice, through you, authority is rightly administered, laws enacted, and judgment decreed. So let the light of your divine wisdom direct the deliberations of our council and shine forth in all the proceedings framed for our rule and government. May they seek to preserve peace promote happiness, and continue to bring us the blessings of liberty and equality. May we witness tonight and going forward a surge of peace and productivity in abundance from our council and our citizens. May we stay safe and blessed. By your grace, we pray. 
Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So you all may be seated. Um, I would like to recognize the two young uh, individuals who helped um, bang in tonight's uh, session. Uh, Julia Wolf Dubin, who is a sophomore at UMFOG, and Rachel Dubin, who is a freshman at UMFOG, and they are not sisters. They are not related. They just happen to have the same last name. So anyway, thank you all for doing that, all right? And eventually, if you'll help them find their way out. So with that objection, we will suspend the calling of the roll and ask the clerk to record the names of those members present throughout the meeting. Is there a motion for adoption of the minutes of the meeting from September 21st, 2021? I got a motion properly second. With that objection, the minutes of the meeting will stand approved as written. Madam Clerk, any messages from the mayor? No, Vice Mayor, there are no messages from the mayor. All right, thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, so uh, just a couple of quick items before we get into the agenda. We have a long one tonight. It's 52 pages long. Um, first, a note of uh, personal privilege for me. Uh, I'd like to express some personal thanks to our Metro Police Department and uh, the emergency management personnel, which I believe would include the fire department, uh, who assisted my wife yesterday. Um, she was involved in a car accident. Uh, they were very quick on the scene, very helpful throughout in what turned out to be a fairly scary situation. Uh, she is going to be okay, and I just wanted to say thank you to Metro for doing their work. I appreciate it. Another note, uh, you may, may have seen articles about the number of boards and commission appointments that have ended up uh, in the office of the vice mayor. Uh, we are confirming tomorrow with the mayor's office to make sure that we have the correct number of positions and the correct number of vacancies. Um, if you have an individual or two uh, that you would like to serve on a board or commission, again, I'm not exactly sure how many I have. I think I know, but we're confirming tomorrow. Uh, please let me know this week, okay? Love to have some individuals, new individuals who might be interested in serving, so please let me know. Uh, Council Member Stiles, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Just wanted to notify the public that all of the women here today are wearing some form of purple in honor of Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and I just wanted to thank everyone, uh, the Women's Caucus, for participating. Thank you so much. Thank you. Everybody looks very nice in purple. Uh, we are now ready to proceed to elections and confirmations. So we have a number of things up tonight. Um, I believe what I'd like to do, uh, unless there's an objection, I'm gonna go to Council Member Vircher. Um, so we have um, typical elections and confirmations to the various commissions and boards. Um, we also have um, the, the appointment of uh, Ms. Kelly Flannery for finance, and we also have some elections, uh, both the Industrial Development Board, and then we have some council elections. What I'd like to do is go through the typical ones first, Council Member Vircher, and then go back to the election so we keep them all together. So Council Member Vircher, you're recognized. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. I had to get my, my report here. We have the confirmations for the auditorium commission appointment of Mr. Fletcher Roster for a term expiring June 30th, 2024. Uh, the committee recommended approval, nine four zero against. Also for the commission appointment of Mr. Jerry Pentecost to the auditorium commission as well for a term expiring June 30th, 2024. Committee recommended approval, nine four zero against. Okay, and then let's skip over uh, Ms. Flannery for just a minute. Hospital authority, and then we'll do all the mechanical, plumbing, and electrical examiners, if you don't mind. Thank, okay, Vice Mayor. Uh, for the hospital authority, the committee recommended approval 740 against for the reappointment of Dr. Fagans for a term expiring July 1st, 
I'm sorry, July 11th, 2026. Okay. And then we've got mechanical, plumbing, and electrical. We have a whole list of those. We do. Mm -hmm. And if it pleases you, uh, Vice Mayor, um, all the uh, all the candidates were voted for in approval. Do I need to read their names for the record? Um, so let's go. We'll go through them each because I, I've heard that some of them were not here. Uh, Terry Atwood. Uh, application. We didn't consider the application. Okay. So that, so that will be deferred one meeting. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mark Bandy. Withdrew the application. Okay, applicant that withdrew. One is withdrawn. Okay. Uh, Mr. Thomas Greer. Committee recommended approval, 940 against. Okay. Uh, Mr. Weston uh, Iller. Requested a deferral. Okay. One meeting deferral on that one. Okay. Mr. Tommy Krantz. Was approved, 940 against. Okay. Uh, Ms. Morgan Miller Wallace. Also approved, 940 against. Okay. Uh, Mr. Anthony Pezzi. Approved, 940 against. Okay. Uh, Mr. Michael Porter. Uh, was, was approved for reappointment, 940 against. And Mr. Brian Yunker. Uh, 940 against. Okay. And then. Um, uh, if that was go, all for the mechanical and plumbing. That's all for mechanical. And then Procurement Standards Board, uh, Ms. Kim San, uh, Sansom. Committee also recommended approval, 940 against. Okay. And I, oh, and then Tourism and Convention and Commission. Ms. LeClaire uh -huh. was approved 940 against. Okay, so let me make sure I've got this right. Um, and this, um, uh, members of the council, uh, this is, um, we have a lot of boards and commissions, we have a lot of things going on, and when we get to public hearing, because of the nature of some of the state laws, we've got things that are kind of combined, so just kind of hang with us today, because we're gonna be merging some bills so we can hear them at the same time. So um, uh, what we've got is, um, um, eventually, there's going to be a motion to approve the appointment of Mr. Fletcher Foster for the Auditorium Commission, Mr. Jen, uh, Jerry Pentecost for the Auditorium Commission, um, the reappointment of Dr. Shindana Fagans for the Hospital Authority, um, the appointment of Mr. Thomas Greer for Mechanical Plumbing and Electrical Examiner's Appeals Board, Tommy Krantz, Ms. Morgan Miller Wallace, Mr. Anthony Pezzi. Mr. Michael Porter, Mr. Brian Yunker for the Mechanical, Plumbing, and Electrical Examiner's Appeal Board. We also had Morgan Miller Wallace too, Vice Mayor. Ms. Uh, Morgan Miller Wallace, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, also for the Mechanical, Plumbing, and um, Appeals Board, Electrical uh, uh, Examiner Appeals Board. And then uh, the appointment of Ms. Kim Sansom for the Procurement Standards Board and the reappointment of Ms. Lisa LeClaire for the Tourism and Convention uh, Commission. Uh, those are the ones that were approved the, uh, through the um, Rules Committee. Uh, Council Member Virtue, if I could have a motion to approve all of those. Vice Mayor, I'd like to move for approval for all of those. So I got a motion to approve all those for uh, confirmation, got a second. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no, uh, you adopt. So let's make sure I've got this. And then um, just to be on the safe side, let's make sure I've got this other stuff right. Um, so um, Mr. Weston Iller for the mechanical plumbers, uh, plumbing and electrical examiners deferred one meeting. Yes. And I believe that was the only one that was deferred. I've got two withdrawals. I've got the withdrawal of Mr. Mark Bandy and uh, the- Terry uh, Atwood. And Mr. Terry Atwood, that. questionnaires weren't sent out, so that will be deferred one meeting okay. as well. So two deferrals, Mr. Terry Atwood and Mr. Western, Weston Iller. Uh, if you could just make a motion for that so we make sure we've got that. that those both would be deferred one meeting. Okay, I'll make a motion to defer uh, the confirmation for Terry Atwood and for Thomas Greer for one meeting. Okay, for uh, uh, Terry Atwood and Mr. Weston Ehler, that's right. All right, uh, for one meeting, uh, that's the motion properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, that motion is adopted. All right, um, we are then back now <clears throat> on E3, the appointment of Ms. Kelly Flannery 
in accordance with Metropolitan Charter Section 8.102. As the new director of the Metropolitan Department of Finance, Councilmember Virtue, you're recognized. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. Uh, the committee recommended approval 940 against for the confirmation of Ms. Kelly Flannery to the Director of Metropolitan Department of Finance. All right, so can I have a motion to approve? Move for approval. So Councilmember Virtue has moved to approve, properly seconded. Discussion on the appointment of Ms. Kelly Flannery. Seeing none, ready to vote. All those in favor of the appointment of Ms. Kelly Flannery, say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Ms. Flannery, is, uh, that motion is adopted. She is the director of the Metropolitan Department of Finance. I have not miss, met Ms. Flannery. Is she here? She is, Vice Mayor. There she is. She's in the back. So welcome. Congratulations. Welcome to Nashville. <laughs> Uh, now that Ms. Flannery has been uh, appointed the director, anybody got questions for her about the budget? Okay. All right, we are now on E5, uh, the Industrial Development Board. All right, so there are five uh, nominees for this, um, for the board. We have uh, three vacancies. Uh, these are for vacancies for terms expiring August 23rd, 2027. Uh, again, there are five nominations, um, three individuals, uh, three vacancies. So let me, uh, let me go through the nominations, and uh, if I pronounce them incorrectly, please um, correct that. Uh, the first is Brian Cordova, nominated by Councilmember Sepulveda. Uh, the second nominee is Amir El Husseini, nominated by Councilmember Suara. Uh, third nomination is Joshua Haston. Nominated by Councilmember Van Rees. Fourth nominee is Nigel Hodge, nominated by Councilmember Withers. And the fifth nominee is Quinn uh, Siegel, nominated by Councilmember Cash. Uh, again, the voting on this is handled under Rule 50. Um, each council member will be allowed to vote for three individuals. We're getting ready to pass out ballots. Um, again, three individuals. You can vote for up to three individuals because there are three vacancies. Each vacancy will be filled by A, the top recipient of votes, and or B, any other nominee receiving 21 or more votes. In the event of multiple vacancies, which we have here, we have three vacancies, any individual that is not elected for the first vacant position shall be deemed nominated for the succeeding vacancies. Uh, we're passing out ballots. Uh, again, you can vote for up to three. We will then collect, when you're ready, hold them up. We will collect them, um, then we'll get them to the clerk. She will read out your picks, and then we will tally the votes.
Okay, um, we believe all ballots are in. Are we missing anybody? Okay, we're good to go. All right, uh, Madam Clerk. Uh, so what the clerk is gonna do is she's gonna read um, uh, the individual council member, uh, make sure that we've got the votes right. We're gonna tally him here. Uh, Madam Clerk, you're recognized. Councilman Mendez voted for Siegel. El Husseini. Councilmember Suara, am I saying that correctly? Thank you. And Hodge. Siegel, El Husseini, and Hodge. Okay. Vice Mayor. Okay, Madam Clerk, proceed ahead. Thank you. Councilmember Hurt voted for Hodge, El Husseini, and Siegel. Could I ask you to confirm if this is yours? I'm not sure that your name is on it. Councilmember Allen, I'm so sorry. Okay, I'm gonna read these votes, thank you. If there's a problem with her handwriting, she can no longer be budget chair. <laughs> Councilmember Allen voted for Siegel, Hodge, and Haston. Councilmember Glover, Siegel, Hodge, Cordova. Councilmember Suara, El Husseini, Cordova, Hodge. Councilmember Hall, Haston, Siegel, El Husseini. Councilmember Toombs, Cordova, Hodge, Haston. Councilmember Gamble, Hodge, Cordova, El Husseini. Councilmember Swope, Hodge, Siegel, Haston. Councilmember Parker, Cordova, Siegel, Hodge. Councilmember Withers, Hodge, Siegel, Haston. Councilmember Benedict, Hodge, Siegel, Cordova. Councilmember Van Rees, Haston, Hodge, Siegel. Councilmember Hancock, Hodge, Siegel, El Husseini. Councilmember Young, Hodge, Siegel, Cordova. Councilmember Hager, Hodge, Siegel, El Husseini. Councilmember Evans, Siegel, Hodge, El Husseini. Councilmember Bradford, Cordova, El Husseini, Haston. Councilmember Roten, Siegel, Hodge, El Husseini. Councilmember Syracuse, Hodge, Siegel, Haston. Councilmember Welsh, Siegel, Hodge, Cordova. Councilmember Sledge, Cordova, Hodge, Siegel. Councilmember Cash, Siegel, Cordova, Hodge. Councilmember O'Connell, Siegel, El Husseini, Cordova. Councilmember Taylor, Cordova, El Husseini, Hodge. Councilmember Hauser, Hodge, Siegel, Haston. Councilmember Druffel, El Husseini, Hodge, Siegel. Councilmember Murphy, Cordova, Hodge, Siegel. Councilmember Pulley, Siegel, Hodge, Haston. Councilmember Johnston, Siegel, Hodge, Haston. Councilmember Nash, Haston, Hodge, Siegel. Councilmember Vercher, Haston, Hodge, Siegel. Councilmember Porterfield, Cordova, 
Hodge, El Husseini, Councilmember Sepulveda, Cordova, El Husseini, Hodge, Councilmember Rutherford, Siegel, Hodge, El Husseini, Councilmember Stiles, Cordova, Hodge, Haston, Councilmember Lee, Hodge, Siegel, El Husseini, Councilmember Henderson, Siegel, Hodge, Haston, Councilmember Rosenberg, Cordova, Hodge, Siegel. Okay, so um, let me tell you the tabulation of the votes. And again, let me read you what I read as we started this. Uh, each council member will be allowed to vote for three individuals because there were three vacancies. Each vacancy will be filled by A, the top recipient of votes and or any other nominee receiving 21 or more votes. In the event of multiple vacancies, and we have three vacancies here, any individual that is not elected for the first vacant position shall be deemed nominated for the succeeding vacancies. Based upon this, th these are the totals. Um, I've got uh, uh, Nigel Hodge receiving 36 votes. Uh, Quinn Siegel receiving 31 votes. Uh, Brian Cordova receiving 18 votes. Uh, Amir El Husseini receiving 17 votes. And Joshua Haston receiving 15 votes. Uh, so, um, uh, Mr. Hodge, uh, Quinn Siegel um, are selected to the Industrial Development Board. 
Um, so we have filled two of those vacancies. Again, Nigel Hodge and Quinn Siegel, congratulations. Um, based upon the interpretation of Rule 50, um, the other three, in the event of multiple vacancies, any individuals that is not elected for the first vacant position shall be nominated for the succeeding vacancies. Uh, we have three individuals that did not get selected, so those three are still in competition for the last seat. Okay, so we will need to vote again. Again, uh, Nigel Hodge elected, uh, Quinn Siegel elected, congratulations. Um, we are gonna be passing out ballots again. You will be voting this time for only one um, and we have three uh, nominees. Again, Brian Cordova, nominated by Council Member Sepulveda, Amir El Husseini, nominated by Council Member Sawara, and Joshua Haston, nominated by Council Member Van Rees. Um, Madam Clerk, can we change the board or um, so we just have those three names up there? We cannot change the board. So, um, uh, members of the Council, do not vote for the last two. They just got elected. Okay. Uh, you're voting for one of the three up at the top of the first three. So ladies and gentlemen in the gallery, um, we have to do this every so often. We are filling positions on a board, and in this case, it is governed by a rule of the city council. And um, so we're following the rules and having to vote by written ballot. So um, just hang with us for just a minute. Uh, we should have the ballots in in just a second. Thanks. Okay. Ready to read? Madam Clerk, uh, proceed ahead. Councilmember Mendez, El Husseini. Councilmember Hurt, El Husseini. Councilmember Allen, Haston. Councilmember Glover, Haston, Councilmember Suara, El Husseini, Councilmember Hall, Haston, Councilmember Toombs, Cordova, Councilmember Gamble, Cordova, Councilmember Swope, Haston, Councilmember Parker, Cordova. Councilmember Withers, Haston. Councilmember Benedict, Cordova. Councilmember Van Rees, Haston. Councilmember Hancock, El Husseini. Councilmember Young, Cordova. Councilmember Hager, 
El Husseini. Council Member Evans, El Husseini. Council Member Bradford, Cordova. Council Member Roten, El Husseini. Council Member Syracuse, Haston. Council Member Welsh, Cordova. Council Member Sledge, Cordova. Council Member Cash, Cordova. Council Member O'Connell, El Husseini. Council Member Taylor, Cordova. Council Member Hauser, Haston. Council Member Druffel, El Husseini. Council Member Murphy, Cordova. Council Member Pulley, Haston. Council Member Johnston, Haston. Council Member Nash, Haston. Council Member Vercher, Haston. Council Member Porterfield, Cordova. Council Member Sepulveda, Cordova. Council Member Rutherford, El Husseini. Council Member Stiles, Cordova. Council Member Lee, El Husseini. Council Member Henderson, Haston. Council Member Ru Rosenberg, Cordova. Uh, Councilmember Rosenberg. Okay, after much deliberation, here's what's happening. Um, so these are the vote totals. Um, Brian Cordova uh, received 15 votes. Amir El Husseini received 11 votes. And Mr. Joshua Haston received 13 votes. So what we were up here talking about was exactly how we do this um, and the belief after uh, consultation is that we eliminate one and then we vote on the final two. Okay, so we're going to get looking for. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, Council Member Glover. Just, just point of order, and maybe this uh, will go to. Um, the acting director, 
if there's not 21 votes, what do, what do our rules say in, in that situation? Well, so this is something where it would require 21 votes to elect a member of the IDB. So if there's not 21 votes, then there wouldn't be anyone elected. So do we so I guess then, Vice Mayor, do we continue the process until there is finally 21? Well, so we, we're down now to two. Right. So we have so, uh, 39 people in the chamber. Yeah. So Math mathematically, uh, there's like a likelihood. The likelihood we're going to get 21 on this go around. So you can only vote for one. Right. We'll see. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to do this one more time. Uh, so, uh, Councilmember Mendez. So if I understand um, uh, Director Zeitlin correctly, um, the, the charter requires that we get 21 for the IDP? The rules don't really say that. Well, so it, it's not a charter requirement uh, because the, the authority from this comes from the state law. Uh, I, I believe that it is a rule requirement, but you might, I might need a minute to find the rule. I mean, it's, it's a rule. It's rule um, 50. 50. And subpart three, and each vacancy will be filled by the top recipient of votes and or any other nominee receiving 21 votes. So I, I don't see that as requiring both. I see it as that there's an or in there. Uh, and, and certainly there's nothing in the rules about eliminating a candidate and moving on. Well. Rule 48 does have an, an elimination of a candidate. It's, it's for, uh, for a different circumstance, but there is a runoff provision in that rule. Right. I mean, I fundamentally don't care, but this isn't in the rules. Uh, so Council Member Rosenberg, if you would come back up here for a minute. Council Member Mendez.
Okay. I didn't know we were going to go 23rd. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, uh, members of the council, uh, after uh, two deliberations, uh, because this was kind of a strange vote, um, we've been following Rule 50, but there's also Rule 23 that has gotten involved in this. Uh, it's the last part of confirmations and questionnaires. It says, unless otherwise specified, all appointments subject to election or confirmation by the council shall be elected or confirmed by majority of the entire membership of the council, which is 21 votes. Uh, except where other requirements are established by the charter. So there is no other requirements of the charter, so we have to get 21 votes. So um, what has to happen um, is we had three people running. Uh, if we continue to have the same three, we're going to continue to get the same vote each time, unless, unless you all start running around switching things. So, that, so in order to be able to get to a majority of the 21 votes, um, we have to take the top two vote getters, have a vote for that. So pursuant to uh, my authority as the vice mayor, that's what we have to do in order to get to this, to, to comply with rule 23. So what we are going to do is, um, again, uh, it was a very close vote. I have now lost all my paperwork, so now I can't remember what we're doing. Here we go. So um, again, the runoff will be between um, a Cordova and Haston, okay? Again, Cordova and Haston, we are gonna pass out ballots again. You will vote for one, and then we will tabulate the votes um, and select the third and final candidate for the Industrial Development Board. So, uh, Council Member Vercher, Council Member Syracuse, could you all come up to the front for just a moment? Council Member Vercher.
Uh, members of the council, um, we, um, my third sheet, so now we're down to um, just two candidates, Cordova and Haston. Uh, Madam Clerk, um, um, I refer to you, go ahead and read out the ballots. Councilmember Mendez, Cordova. Councilmember Hurt, Cordova. Councilmember Allen, Haston. Councilmember Glover, Haston. Councilmember Suara, Cordova. Councilmember Hall, Haston. Councilmember Toombs, Cordova. Councilmember Gamble, Cordova. Councilmember Swope, Haston. Councilmember Parker, Cordova. Councilmember Withers, Haston. Councilmember Benedict, Cordova. Councilmember Van Reese, Haston. Councilmember Hancock, Haston. Councilmember Young, Cordova. Councilmember Hager, Cordova. Councilmember Evans, Cordova. Councilmember Bradford, Cordova. Councilmember Roten, Haston. Councilmember Syracuse, Haston. Councilmember Welsh, Cordova. Councilmember Sledge, Cordova. Councilmember Cash, Cordova. Councilmember O'Connell, Cordova. Councilmember Taylor, Cordova. Madam Clerk, um, hold on just a second. Give it back to her, or what? So Madam Clerk, proceed ahead. Councilmember Hauser, Haston. Councilmember Dreffel. Haston. Councilmember Murphy, Cordova. Councilmember Pulley, Haston. Councilmember Johnston, Haston. Councilmember Nash, Haston. Councilmember Vercher, Haston. Councilmember Porterfield, Cordova. Councilmember Sepulveda, Cordova. Councilmember Rutherford, Cordova. Councilmember Stiles, Cordova. Councilmember Lee, Cordova. Councilmember Henderson, Haston. Councilmember Rosenberg, Cordova. Uh, members of the uh, council, uh, the vote on the third round was um, uh, Cordova 23, Haston 16. Uh, Cordova is the winner. Congratulations. So we have now elected three members of the Industrial Development Board.
All right. Thank you all for hanging with us. Uh, do we? I know uh, uh, Mr. Haston, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Nigel Hodge, Quinn Siegel, and Brian Cordova. Are are you all still in the audience? If you'll stand up, just so we can acknowledge all three of you. Two of us, two of them are there. So thank you. All three of you are here. Congratulations. <laughs> and Mr. Haston and Mr. El Husseini, are you all in here? Are you all still here? They may have gotten tired and left. <laughs> um, so this was obviously a close vote. We always are very appreciative of people willing to serve. I know this took a little while. Congratulations. Thank you for agreeing to be a part of this. Thank you very much. And um, I will say for uh, uh, Mr. Foster, Mr. Pentecost, um, uh, Dr. Fagans, uh, we have uh, Mr. Greer, Mr. Krantz, Ms. Morgan Miller-Wallace, Mr. Anthony Pezzi, Mr. Michael Porter, Mr. Brian Yunker, uh, Ms. Kim Sansom, and Ms. Lisa LeClaire. Are any of y'all still here? If you all will stand up and be recognized, thank you all, because you got voted on early, thank you all for agreeing to serve. Okay, so um, before I forget, one more thing, and then we're gonna get to the final votes uh, to fill certain slots by the council. Um, item number E18, Procurement Standards Board. Uh, we are supposed to call for nominations to fill one vacancy for a term expiring October 19th, 2024. It's my understanding I'm supposed to take nominations to fill that. Um, and I've got people ready to go. Uh, Council Member Bradford, uh, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like to nominate Brady Escorn Morris. Okay. Uh, Brady, give me the middle name. E-T-Z-K-O-R-N. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Sepulveda, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to nominate Roger T. Legion Jr. Okay. Uh, could you spell that last name? L I G O N. Okay, any other nominations? Okay, so we've got two nominations. We'll take that up. Uh, it's for a uh, term expiring October 19th, 2024. We will vote on that at the next meeting. All right, we are now ready to proceed back to three elections, uh, one through the Metropolitan Audit Committee, uh, one for the Planning Commission uh, member, which will be the, become the Planning Committee Chair, and then we uh, are electing one council member to serve a two-year term on the Traffic and Parking Commission. Um, these elections follow Rule 48. Uh, at previous meetings, I announced that we would be taking nominations uh, and that we would be voting on these positions uh, at tonight's meeting. So um, in terms of following um, Rule 48, we are gonna be voting by written ballot. Uh, again, you must write your name on the ballot uh, indicate if you're a district or at-large um, uh, member, uh, and then you will be voting on that ballot for the nominee of your choice. So um, the rules don't actually allow for um, speeches, uh, but um, we do need to take nominations. And um, what I will do is I know that certain people have already said that they are running. Um, but I'm going to make sure that we get proper nominations before us tonight. So we're going to start with nominations for the audit committee. So just to make sure, um, uh, well, I'm just going to tell you. So uh, Council Member Hurt is a nominee. Uh, Council Member Toombs is a nominee. And Council Member Johnston is a nominee. But I've got people in the queue, so I'm going to go ahead and recognize them. Council Member Mendez, come to you first. Thanks. 
I was just going to nominate Councilmember Toombs. Okay, so Councilmember Toombs is nominated. We got that. Uh, Councilmember Druffel, you recognized? Yeah, I was going to uh, nominate uh, Courtney Johnson for audit. Okay. And um, Councilmember uh, Hurt, I already know that you are uh, you don't have to stand up. So uh, Councilmember Sawara, I recognize you? Yes, I'd like to nominate Councilmember Hurt for Okay. All right, so those were the three people. We'd already seen letters for those. Any other nominations? Okay, those are the three individuals nominated. Again, uh, this is for two spots. Now, again, the interpretation of the rules is that we can do these individually, but because we have three people running and we have two slots for the audit committee, I would like to do this at the same time so we don't have to do two separate elections. But um, I'm checking. Is there any, ob any objections? What we would do is we would simply vote for two members at the same time so we don't have to have two separate elections. Any objections? We can do them separately, but uh, if there's not an objection, we will um, pass out the ballots. You will vote for two, and it's majority on this one, so we'll take the top two vote getters. Those will be your audit representatives. Any objections to doing it that way? Just saves us an extra step. Without objection, so declared, okay. Uh, we will pass out the ballots. You will be voting for two. Um, again, the nominees are Council Member Sharon Hurt, Council Member Quante Toombs, and Council Member Courtney Johnson, Johnston. These are for a two-year term to serve on the Metropolitan Audit Committee. So again, uh, you can vote for up to two uh, individuals. We have two vacancies, you can vote for up to two. You cannot vote for three, that's not fair. All right, all, um, all ballots are in. Uh, we are ready to start calling them out. Uh, Madam Clerk. 
Councilmember Mendez, Toombs, and Johnston. Councilmember Hurt, Hurt, and Toombs. Councilmember Allen, Hurt, and Toombs. Councilmember Glover, Johnston, and Hurt. Councilmember Suara, Toombs, and Hurt. Councilmember Hall, Hurt, and Toombs. Councilmember Toombs, Toombs, and Hurt. Councilmember Gamble, Toombs, and Hurt. Councilmember Swope, Johnston, and Hurt. Councilmember Parker, Hurt, and Toombs. Councilmember Withers, Johnston, and Hurt. Councilmember Benedict, Toombs, and Hurt. Councilmember Van Rees, Toombs, and Hurt. Councilmember Hancock, Hurt, and Toombs. Councilmember Young, Toombs, and Johnston. Councilmember Hager, Toombs, and Johnston. Councilmember Evans, Johnston, and Hurt. Councilmember Bradford, Toombs, and Johnston. Councilmember Roten, Hurt, and Toombs. Councilmember Syracuse, Hurt, and Toombs. Councilmember Welsh, Toombs, and Hurt. Councilmember Sledge, Hurt, and Toombs. Councilmember Cash, Toombs, and Johnston. Councilmember O'Connell, Toombs, and Hurt. Councilmember Taylor, Hurt and Toombs. Councilmember Hauser, Hurt and Toombs. Councilmember Druffle, Johnston and Toombs. Councilmember Murphy, Johnston and Toombs. Councilmember Pulley, Johnston, and Hurt. Councilmember Johnston, Johnston. Councilmember Nash, Johnston, and Toombs. Councilmember Vercher, Hurt, and Johnston. Councilmember Porterfield, Toombs and Hurt. Councilmember Sepulveda, Toombs and Hurt. Councilmember Rutherford, Toombs and Hurt. Councilmember Stiles, Toombs and Hurt. Councilmember Lee, Hurt and Toombs. Councilmember Henderson, Toombs and Johnston. Councilmember Rosenberg, Toombs and Hurt.
Okay, um, the vote tabulation is Council Member Toombs got uh, 32 votes, uh, Council Member Hart got 29, and Council Member Johnston got 16. So our two representatives to the Audit Committee are Council Member Toombs, Council Member Hart, congratulations. Okay. And you don't know what you just got yourself into. Okay. All right, uh, next election is for one council member to serve a two-year term for uh, the planning and zoning chair. Uh, they will become our planning commission member, um, taking nominations, I believe. Uh, I know that there is one. Uh, council member Allen, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I would like to nominate Brett Withers. Okay, council member Withers is nominated. Any other nominations? Council Member Vercher, you recognized. There you are. I'd like to close nominations. All right, so Council Member uh, Vercher has moved to close nominations. That's the motion, properly second. Um, any, um, uh, we're on a motion to close nominations. Any uh, second? Uh, no further discussion. All in favor of closing nominations say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, nominations are closed. We only have one nomination. I would accept a nomination. Uh, Council Member Swope, uh, we have a motion to approve Council Member Withers as our representative of the Planning Commission by acclamation, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Council Member Withers, congratulations. All right, we're almost finished with the first three or four pages of our calendar. That's only quarter of eight. Uh, last one is um, uh, the election of one council member to serve a two-year term for the Traffic and Parking Commission. Um, so I will take nominations for that. I believe we have two people running. Um, so uh, council member Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to nominate Councilwoman Jennifer Gamble. Okay. Uh, Councilmember O'Connell, uh, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to nominate Councilmember Henderson. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other nominations? Anybody else on the board? Okay, so um, we have two uh, nominees for uh, the Traffic and Parking Commission, an election of one council member, again, to serve a two-year term. Um, I believe we're going to do this also uh, by ballot. Um, here they come. So, again, we've only got two people running, Council Member Gamble and Council Member Henderson. Uh, we're going to pass out the ballots. Uh, again, put your name um, in district or at large, and then you'll vote for one. Councilmember Hancock, you cannot vote for two. Vote for one. Councilmember Hancock, this is why you ran for this, so you can vote against council members. It's one of the worst things you have to do.
All right. Um, you ready, Madam Clerk? Yes. Take the vote. Councilmember Mendez, Henderson. Councilmember Hurt, Gamble. Councilmember Allen, Henderson. Councilmember Glover, Henderson. Councilmember Suara, Gamble. Councilmember Toombs, Gamble. Councilmember Gamble, Gamble. Councilmember Swope, Henderson. Councilmember Parker, Henderson. Councilmember Withers, Henderson. Councilmember Benedict, Henderson. Councilmember Van Rees, Henderson. Councilmember Hancock, Henderson. Councilmember Young, Henderson. Councilmember Hager, Henderson. Councilmember Evans, Henderson. Councilmember Bradford, Henderson. Councilmember Roten, Henderson. Councilmember Syracuse, Henderson. Councilmember Welsh, Henderson. Councilmember Sledge, Henderson. Councilmember Cash, Henderson. Councilmember O'Connell, Henderson. Councilmember Taylor, Gamble. Councilmember Hauser, Henderson. Councilmember Druffle, Henderson. Councilmember Murphy, Henderson. Councilmember Pulley, Henderson. Councilmember Johnston, Henderson. Councilmember Nash, Henderson. Councilmember Porterfield, Gamble. Councilmember Sepulveda, Gamble. Councilmember Rutherford, Henderson. Councilmember Stiles, Henderson. Councilmember Lee, Gamble. Councilmember Henderson, Henderson. Councilmember Rosenberg, Henderson. Okay, uh, the vote is uh, Councilmember Henderson got 29 votes, Councilmember Gamble got eight. So, Councilmember Henderson, congratulations. You are new representative on the Traffic and Parking Commission. Okay, Director Zeitland, does that complete uh, our elections <laughs> confirmations? Yes, I can. Okay, I think we're finally through with that. And put these papers away. All right, uh, we are now on proposed rules amendment. This is proposed amendment to Rule 14 of the Council Rules of Procedure. Councilmember Johnston, uh, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, we found ourselves in a little bit of a quandary uh, about a month ago or so when we didn't have a finance director, nor did we have a named interim. And so I saw the opportunity to do a rule change that would allow for, um, for another uh, director in the, um, an assistant director in the finance department to be able to um, sign off on appropriations in that, in the case. Um, we were in that situation where there was not a named director. Um, I got a, an opinion from Metro Legal that says that, that the language is consistent with the charter. Um, I do think that we need to have something in the charter that limits the amount of time that we can go without 
a named director or interim, um, but that's a whole different conversation. So um, I hope to have your support so that we can have a rule that mimics what the charter says uh, and gives us an option for appropriations when needed. Okay, so uh, this has been proposed to the council. It's been on the desk. Um, are you moving, are you proposing that we proceed ahead tonight with yeah. the change in the amendment? Yes. Okay, so um, what I'll need is a um, motion to approve. Uh, so moved. Okay, so we've got a motion to approve. This is a proposed amendment to rule 14 and it has been laid out in the packet prior to this. Uh, Councilmember Member Johnston has explained it's been properly seconded. So the motion is to approve. We need 27 votes to approve this. Discussion on uh, the proposed rules amendment. Okay. Do we have to go on the board? I, I would just go ahead and do it on the board. On the board, okay. Yeah. All right, because it requires 27 votes, we're gonna make sure we do this correctly. Uh, on the board, so uh, there's nobody else in the queue. The motion is to approve rule 14, council rules of procedure, uh, to make the change. Uh, it's been properly seconded. Madam Clerk, can you prepare, you're ready to go? We are on the board, voting on the change to the uh, rules, uh, proposed amendment to rule 14. If you want the rule change, you vote aye. If you vote, if you don't want it, you vote no. Madam Clerk, open up the machines. that we're about to close the vote, then the one person may or may not have. Okay, so we are getting ready to close the machines. One person has not voted. Thank you. Okay. Close the machines, take the vote. We're voting on a uh, proposed rule change to rule 14 it requires 27 votes. It passes 31 in favor, zero no's, four abstentions. Uh, the change is made in the rules. All right. Um, we're now on ready to go for bills on public hearing or on page four of my agenda uh, is section G. Um, I will, here's how this works. We're now on public hearings of zoning bills. Call up the bills one at a time and then refer to the sponsor. Unless the sponsor moves to defer the public hearing, the sponsor will call for a public hearing. Again, we're on zoning bills. Then ask for a show of hands for those who are here in favor of the bill. Show of hands of those who are in opposition to the bill. If anyone in favor of the measure wishes to speak, I'll ask you to come forward, find the microphone, introduce yourself, and give us your address. Then you'll have two minutes in which to speak. I will then ask if anyone opposed wishes to speak. After that process, I will close the public hearing and refer back to the sponsor. We are ready to proceed with the first bill. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, members of the council, uh, because of some new state changes, we sometimes are gonna have connecting bills all right, so follow with me because it's gonna get a little confused. We're gonna to try to tie those bills together and have the public hearing because they're basically the same bills at the same time. Um, again, if you all, we wanna defer, if the sponsor wants to defer, we will f defer both bills. All right, so we are now ready for the first bill. It's item number one. Uh, it's bill 2021-766 by council member Porterfield. We're also gonna tie that to item number 16, uh, which is on page 11 of my calendar. That's BL 2021-886. Uh, these bills are connected. Uh, so without objection, we'll take them together. Let me read the captions, council member Porterfield. BL 2021-766, ordinance to amend title 17 of the Metropolitan Code. By changing from AR28 SP zoning on property located at 3156 Anderson Road, permit 22 multifamily residential units. And then item number 16, this is BL 2021 886, 
also by Council Member Porterfield, ordinance authorized building material restrictions and requirements for BL 2021 766, proposed specific plan zoning district located at 3156 Anderson Road. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of building. Council Member Porterfield, you're recognized on both those bills. There you go. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like to open the public hearing, please. Okay, so uh, Council Member Porterfield has moved to open up the public hearing, declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those in the audience who are here in favor of either one of those bills, Bill 2021-766 or Bill 2021-886. Show of hands. Uh, see a show of hands in opposition to either one of those bills. Seeing nobody on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Porterfield, uh, you're on both those bills. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move for approval. Uh, so, so Council Member Porterfield has moved for approval on both BL 2021-766 and BL 2021-886. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approval on public hearing of those two bills say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt both those bills. Thank you, Councilmember Porterfield. Okay, we are now on item number two, BL 2021-797 by Councilmember Withers. This is an ordinance amending section 17.12.070 of the Metropolitan Code to amend the requirements of the residential floor area ratio bonus in mixed use. Councilmember Withers, you're recognized. Thank you so much, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'm going to request to defer the public hearing on this one to the first meeting in November. However, I also have a substitute that I'd like to offer. All right. So uh, let's get the uh, so the public hearing is going to be deferred, um, assuming that we pass that to the first meeting in November. Um, let's go ahead and get the substitute on, and then we'll deal with the um, motion to move the bill to the first meeting in November. Council Member Withers, you recognize on your substitute. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move the substitute with a brief comment. All right. So Council Mayor Withers has moved his substitute, properly seconded back to you for an explanation of the substitute. Thank you so much. For those who may not be familiar with this bill, this uh, amends a section of the code that has been in the municipal code for a little while. It was a provision that was added that adds additional floor area ratio in some zoning districts, all within the urban zoning overlay. It's very kind of wonky for planning people. Uh, but it added some additional floor area ratio for residential uses. Um, as we know, the state had ended up preempting our um, inclusionary zoning housing policies. Um, a while back, the uh, zoning administrator determined that this entire section of the code was preempted by that and recommended reintroducing it. So uh, earlier, a couple of months ago, I reintroduced it. I've been working with the planning department staff uh, and others have had some um, uh, uh, community meetings, virtual community meetings with some stakeholder groups, including um, affordable housing builders and other housing builders uh, had a community meeting uh, on that about a week ago. Uh, this substitute, uh, what it does is it incorporates the most common, uh, the items that had the most common agreement from all of that stakeholder feedback and, and neighborhood association feedback. Uh, so uh, paragraph one of this bill is all, as it always has been, paragraph two, we've amended it. It no longer has uh, language related to commercial uses. However, it does state that uh, properties or projects that would access the floor area issue would not be allowed to have um, short-term rentals. So this was the area of greatest agreement. Um, I wanna go ahead and get this substitute on so we can get that before the planning commission at the next meeting on October the 14th. I uh, want to state while I'm here that I welcome any uh, council members, especially those who represent portions of the urban zoning overlay. Take a look at the substitute. Please take a look at the staff recommendation that'll be coming out, I think, on Friday of this week uh, and welcome any colleagues uh, representing those areas to provide your comments to us at the October 14th Planning Commission hearing. So. Uh, with that, I'd like to renew my motion to add the substitute. Okay, so we're on the substitute. Councilman Withers has moved the substitute. Again, it was properly seconded. Discussions on the substitute? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All in favor of the substitute say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Substitute's adopted. Uh, now you're on your bill as substituted. Back to you, Councilman Withers. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Vice Mayor. And with that, a uh, lengthy brief comment, I would like to uh, 
defer the Metro Council public hearing to the first meeting in November. Okay, so the motion is to defer to the, uh, the first meeting in November. I properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, this is deferred to the first meeting in November. Uh, we're on item number three, Bill 2021-810 by Councilmember Van Rees. Uh, this can be taken with item 18, which is uh, Bill 2021-888. Uh, Bill 2021-810 by Councilmember Van Rees, an ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from RS10 to SP zoning for properties located at 301 Ben Allen Road and Ben Allen Road unnumbered to permit 245 multifamily residential units. And uh, item number 18, Bill 2021-888, an ordinance to authorize building material restrictions and requirements for Bill 2021-810, proposed specific plan zoning district located at 301 Ben Allen Road and Ben Allen Road unnumbered. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Council Member Van Rees, you are recognized. Uh, committee reports. Uh, so I don't, think you've, okay, I don't then, think you've got any. Then I will move to open the public hearing then. Okay, move to open the public hearing. A show of hands of those folks who are here in favor of either one of those two bills. See some hands in the back. A show of hands of those who are here in opposition of those two bills. Council Member Van Rees, I can't see around that poll. Anybody hands up? Okay, so anybody wishing to speak in favor of those two bills? <coughs> Seeing nobody coming forward, declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Van Rees, you're on your two bills. Thank you, I'd like to move both uh, forward with a brief comment. All right, so the motion is to approve uh, 810 and 888 uh, for passage on public hearing on second reading, properly seconded back to you. Uh, thank you very much. I uh, just wanted to take a, a moment uh, to uh, thank uh, the folks that have been working on this project. It'll be a beautiful uh, trail-oriented development offering uh, workforce and affordable housing. And with that, I offer uh, uh, this uh, for approval. All right, you had a much briefer explanation, shorter than Councilmember Withers. Uh, that's gonna you know. happen. Yeah. yeah, okay. So uh, we are on a motion to approve 810 and 888. Properly seconded, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of those two bills say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Both those bills pass on second reading. We are now on item number four. Uh, Bill 2021-827 by Councilmember Hauser and Rosenberg, an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code by changing from SP to RS80 zoning for properties located at 87, 8733 and 8811 New Substation Road, approximately 1,700 feet northwest of Coley Davis Road, zone SP. It's 131.06 acres. Councilmember Hauser, you're recognized. Councilmember Rosenberg, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Okay, declare the public hearing open. We are on BL 2021-827. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure. A show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this measure. I don't see any, don't see anybody on either side. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Rosenberg, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Move approval. Okay, got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no, you adopt. Uh, we are on BL 2021-831, it's item number five, O'Connell, Bradford, and Parker. Ordinance uh, amending section 6.28.030, 17.04.060, and 17.20.030 of the code to amend the definition of short-term rental property, not owner-occupied, and to amend parking requirements related to short-term rental property, not owner-occupied. Councilmember O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to defer the public hearing on this one to November, please. Okay, so the motion is to defer uh, to the first meeting in November. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The motion, uh, this one's deferred to the first meeting in November. Okay, uh, we're on item number six, Bill 2021-832 by Allen and O'Connell. Um, ordinance to amend various sections of Title 17 to incentivize inclusionary housing with any residential development that seeks additional development entitlements beyond that permitted by the current Bay Zoning District. Uh, Council Member Allen, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I would like to um, move a substitute and defer this. All right, so let's do the substitute first. Um, Council Member Allen uh, moves you. the substitute. Properly seconded. Back to you for an explanation. Uh, thank substitute. you. Brief explanation. The bill itself is part of a pair of bills that would create 
a new housing tool, one of uh, one of the uh, a slate of ones that was recommended by the by the task force to the mayor's affordable housing task force to try to create more tools so that we can incentivize uh, the building of more housing that is affordable to our our um, many people that keep this this city running. Uh, this particular program would um, create, uh, take use of the downtown codes bonus height program that if someone were uh, to provide, set aside a certain percentage of their units to be used for people who are income qualified, then they would be able to add a certain amount of height to their, to their building within the downtown code. That's a program that already exists for certain other benefits to the, to the city. Um, this would then, there's a, another bill that we'll talk about later on tonight that provides that funding mechanism. So that we, this, this bill, this piece of it, creates a master lease agreement process that would enable the owner to be paid market rate for the process and a third party would then serve to receive the income qualified income that's only 30%. I'm deferring this, which means I'll get to explain it again at least two more times. Um, but I just want to at least get, get the beginning of an explanation so that people can ask me questions about it. Um, the substitute makes some changes. We will probably make further changes down the road, but what this substitute does is uh, adds a, an official definition of inclusionary housing, which is workforce and affordable housing. It removes a reference to the participation agreement. Um, it, it strikes uh, a somewhat complicated table uh, with regard to what the percentages need to be and simplifies that. And uh, if Ms. Zeitlin wants to add anything else that's in the substitute, I would, um, she's worked closely with me, I would invite her to do Director, that as well. Director Zeitlin. Say, it makes a lot of um, uh, clean up to the, to the existing language to kind of, I guess, give uh, Metro a little more flexibility in, in administering the program as Thank well. You. So that the substitute is, um, is, is responding to input that I've already gotten from different stakeholders that I've shown it to. Um, and this will also enable it to track with uh, the planning staffs and planning commission schedule. So with that long explanation, I would like to move the substitute. I believe that was longer than council member Withers a right. brief substitute, a brief That's explanation. Um, so uh, council member Allen has moved uh, for passes of the substitute ordinance on 2021, 832 properly seconded. Any discussion on the substitute? Seeing none, all those in favor of the substitute say aye. aye. Opposed no. Substitutes on, Councilmember Allen, on your bill as substitute. Thank you, and with that, I would like to move uh, to defer this to the November public hearing on November 2nd with another brief exclamation. All right, so this is gonna be deferred to the first meeting of November, properly seconded, back to you. Thank you, uh, and we had some good uh, input both in the budget committee and in planning about this, and some other suggestions were made which will um, end up in uh, further, uh, further amendments somewhere down the line to add both a cap and a sunset just so that we can make sure that we can evaluate this along the way. So with that, I would move for a two meeting deferral. Okay, so uh, it goes to the first meeting in November. That's a two meeting deferral properly, um, uh, properly moved, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion to defer say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, motion is deferred to the first meeting in November. BL 2021-842 by Cash, Porterfield, Murphy and Stiles. Uh, this is an ordinance amending chapter 16.28 and section 16.40430 of the code to amend the regulations of the demolition of potentially historic structures and sites. Council Member Cash, you're recognized. Thank you. I um, want to defer the public hearing, um, but want to, before that, I want to I have a substitute that right. I'd like to uh, enter. All right, so let's take up the substitute. I got a um, motion to approve the substitute by Council Member Cash, properly seconded. Back to you. All right, thanks. Um, and also, actually, well, I'll, I'll defer in a minute, sorry. Um, so this bill is something that um, uh, Historic Zoning has worked on and, and worked with me uh, that um, originally had a number of things that, to try to protect historic structures, especially parts of it uh, protect pre-1865 historic structures that were not in overlays protecting them. Um, and kind of gave some time and, and, and gave some time to um, maybe inventory some assets if the building was to be demolished, were there historic assets uh, as part of the building. Um, and then there was a third part that uh, basically expanded a moratorium on uh, new permits for proposed landmark overlay. So once, you know, once somebody files for a, a historic overlay or a conservation overlay, uh, demolition permits for those properties cease, right? 
um, or for some of the properties, at least, for the contributing properties. So th uh, there was some, since I introduced it, there was some discussion uh, at Metro Legal, and I think there are parts of this original bill that uh, are not, are, that we need to remove. Um, so that's one of the main things the substitute does, although it keeps the uh, moratorium on uh, no new no new demolition permits for proposed landmark overlays. It basically adds, like now there's 90 days, it basically adds some time if in the process there is a deferral uh, of the proposed, of the legislation that proposes the landmark overlay. Also, I've added something that um, in the bill that uh, I wanted that relates to when there are, there, in my district there have been some accidental quote unquote demolitions um, based on miscommunication, sometimes is the is cited as the reason, and so I've, uh, I'm asking for something that provides some documentation uh, by the applicant um, for, that's working on our historic home that kind of says that they are going to inform all the subcontractors of the of the status, you know, whether it's to be demolished, partially demolished, or not demolished so that there's no miscommunication about the demolition of historic homes. Uh, that explanation given, I want to um, move, we need to vote on the substitute and then I defer. Right, so uh, the motion before you is to uh, motion to approve the substitute, it's been properly seconded. Any discussion on the substitute? I've got Councilmember Roten over here telling a good joke. I see him. Uh, so the motion is uh, to approve the substitute properly seconded. No disc and no buddy in the queue. All in favor of the substitute say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Substitute's adopted. Now you're on a motion to defer. All right. So yes, I would like to defer to uh, November 2nd to the so two meetings. First meeting in and, uh, November. And, yes, first meeting in November. And I want to make sure that it also gets referred to the Government Operations Committee since uh, it does involve the codes department since they're collecting the documentation. Okay, so the motion is to defer to the first meeting in November, also re -ref uh, referring the bill to government operations. That's the motion, properly seconded. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Council Member Cash. Uh, we're on number I, number eight, Bill 2021-843 by Roberts, Porterfield, and Stiles. Ordinance to amend section 17.36.110.120.17.40.550 of the Metropolitan Code relative to historic signage. Um, uh, Councilmember Roberts is not here. Uh, Councilmember Porterfield is not here. Stiles is not here. Um, it's my understanding that she wanted to defer the bill anyway, so it will automatically be, de be deferred to the first meeting in November because it's going to be in public hearing. So it's automatically defer, be deferred to the first meeting in November, okay? Uh, we are now on item number nine by Councilmember Parker, BL 2021-844, uh, an ordinance to amend section 17.40.720 of the Metropolitan Code, require notice by mail to the address of a property in certain cases. Councilmember Parker, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Do we have committee reports on this one? Uh, not on this one. Okay. Um, this is for public hearing, correct? That's right. Thank you. So I'd like to open the public hearing. Please. Okay, to clear the public hearing open, a show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure. Again, we're on BL 2021 844. Uh, I see one hand over in the back, two hands, it's like an auction. Okay, uh, anybody in opposition to this measure? Councilmember Parker, I don't see anybody back there. Do you see anybody? I don't either. Okay, so uh, those in favor wish to speak? Anybody wishing to speak on this one? Seeing none, declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Parker, you're on your bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I'd like to move for approval with a brief explanation. All right, so we've got a motion to approve properly, seconded back to you. Um, thank you, and, and so this is a bill um, that would somewhat improve notice to um, tenants um, in addition to the existing notice that we provide to property owners when um, properties are, are proposed for rezoning. Um, I worked with planning to, um, to uh, refine this into something that they thought would be both effective and not 
uh, impose an administrative burden on their staff. So lots of thanks to, to planning for, um, for helping me with this. And with that, I would move this, uh, renew my motion for approval. All right, so Council Member Parker renewed his motion. It's been properly seconded. Any discussion on the bill? Seeing none, we're voting on 844 uh, on uh, second reading. All those in favor of the bill say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt. Thank you, Councilmember Parker. We're now on item number 10 and item number 11 and item number 19. Councilmember Van Rees has got a trifecta. Bill 2021, 853, 854, and 889. Uh, we can take all those together. Uh, Councilor Van Rees, is that okay? Uh, yes, I am actually going to uh, indefinitely defer. Uh, uh, I believe all all the entire triptych. Am I correct, uh, Ms. Seitlin? Yes. Okay. Um, all right, so, so I'd like to indefinitely defer all of them until we can uh, work out some arrangements. Thank you. Okay. If it's okay, I'm gonna. Uh, I'll read the captions real quick. Just let yep. people know what we're doing. Uh, A53 uh, mm -hmm. is Title 17. A mini Title 17. Applying on historical landmark overlay district to 435 Old Hickory Boulevard, southeast corner of Donna Drive and Old Hickory Boulevard. 854 is item number 11. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by applying a neighborhood landmark overlay district to properly located 435 Old Hickory Boulevard, southeast corner of Donna Drive and Old Hickory Boulevard. And item number 19, 889, ordinance to authorize building material restrictions for 2021 853. 435 Old Hickory Boulevard, southeast corner of Donna Drive, and Old Hickory Boulevard. That's a proposed ordinance that requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Council Member Van Rees, you are on all three of your bills. Uh, yes, sir. I'd like to move indefinite deferral of all three so that they track together and we can work out some parking arrangements. All right, so the motion is to defer all three indefinitely, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, motion to defer indefinitely. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, all three bills are deferred indefinitely. Okay. Um, we're on item number 12, Bill 2021 857 by Council Member Syracuse. We can take this with item number 20, which is Bill 2021 890, uh, 12 and 20. 2020, 2021 857 by Council Member Syracuse. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from RS 10 to SP zoning for properties located at 1908 Lebanon Pike and Lebanon Pike unnumbered, northeast corner of Omahundro <laughs> Drive and Lebanon Pike. And then um, item number 20, Bill 2021 890 by Council Member Syracuse. Ordinance to authorize building material restrictions requirements for Bill 2021 857. Proposed specific plan zoning district located at 1908 Lebanon Pike. Lebanon Pike unnumbered, northeast corner of Omahondo Drive and Lebanon Pike. Council Member Syracuse, you're on both your bills. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Open the public hearing, please. Okay, declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of these measures. See a couple of hands in the back. A show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this measure. Don't see anybody in opposition. Those in favor wish to speak. Bunch of head shaking no. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Syracuse, you're on your bill. Thanks, Vice Mayor. Bill. Move approval. Okay, motion is to approve both 857 and 890 on second reading. Proper motion, proper second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the two bills say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt. Thank you, Councilmember Syracuse. Uh, Councilmember Van Rees, I got another one for you. It's uh, item number 13, BL 2021-859, uh, ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from OG to MUGA zoning for a portion of property located at 612 West Due West Avenue, northwest corner of West Due West Avenue, and South Graycroft Avenue at 16.50 acres. Councilmember Van Rees, you are recognized. It was. Uh, it is uh, my uh, pleasure to open the public hearing, please. It is her pleasure to open up the peer, uh, public hearing as, as well as... Uh, my pleasure as well. Uh, show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure. See some hands uh, up. A show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this measure. Seeing nobody in opposition, those in favor wish to speak. Uh, nobody coming forward. Declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Van Rees, you're on your uh, bill. I would like to move approval with another extraordinarily beef uh, comment. Okay, so you've got a substitute. Do you want to put oh, that I on? Oh, I totally forgot. Um, 
Yes, I'd like to move a uh, substitute with the explanation of the substitute. All right, so Councilmember Van Rees has moved a substitute properly seconded. Back to you for an explanation. Uh, yes, the substitute, um, uh, friends, is to uh, add uh, the NS to part of the rezoning uh, as a request from the neighborhoods to make sure that some of the property uh, does not allow short-term rental. Okay, so that's the explanation of the substitute. Any questions on the substitute? Seeing none, uh, all those in favor of the substitute say aye. Those no. Uh, substitutes adopted. You're on your bill as substitute. Fantastic. I'd like to move the bill as substitute uh, with a brief comment. All right. So the bill is substitute bill 2021-859 as substituted. The motion is to approve on second reading. Properly seconded. Back to you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, colleagues, uh, sometimes we work on things for a very long time. And this project is one of those things. I started talking to neighbors about this um, in 2010. So it's been an 11-year project for me six years as a representative. You'll see on your desk some letters of support uh, from the neighborhood and uh, from community leaders, in addition to some aerial photographs of this incredibly um, large property. Uh, the old Memorial Hospital has been all but vacant uh, for an extended period of time, and uh, it is time for the Madison Renaissance to continue with this new development, and I ask for your approval. Okay, so Council Member Van Rees has moved approval of Bill 2021-859 as substituted. Again, it was properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, ready to vote. All in favor of 2021-859 as substituted on passage on second reading, say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Thank you, Council Member Van Rees. We're on items 14 and 15. It's Bill 2021-868 by O'Connell and 869 by O'Connell. Uh, ordinance to amend Title 17 to update review processes, update maps, revise typographic areas, and refine the urban design standards within Chapter 17.37, Downtown Code. And then BL 2021-869, uh, Ordinance to amend Title 17 and refine the urban design standards within Chapter 17.37, Downtown Code relating to permitted uh, facade materials. Uh, proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of Buildings. Council Member O'Connell, you recognized on both your bills. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to open the public hearing. Okay, declare the uh, public hearing open on both 868 and 869. A show of hands of those in favor of either one of those two measures. Show of hands of those in opposition to um, either one of those two measures. I don't see anybody on either side. Declare the public hearing closed. Council Member O'Connell, you're on your bills. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move approval. Okay, Council Member O'Connell has moved approval. Of both, you've got a substitute on 869. Do you want to go ahead and oh, do that one? Yes, please. Let's move that substitute. I'd okay, forgotten about that. So let's that go one. back. Um, so um, let's do B the substitute's only on one. It's on BL 2021 869. Councilmember O'Connell, on your substitute. I'd like to move the substitute, please. Councilmember O'Connell moves the substitute on 869, properly seconded. Back to you on the substitute. Thank you. Uh, now I guess I'd like to move the bill as substitute. Or I guess we need to vote on the substitute. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to explain what the substitute does? I, I think that if, if I'm recalling correctly on the materiality, this is just technical corrections, but I'll, I'll look to Hannah or, or right. uh, Dr. Yeah. Zeitlin. Um, this basically adds language related to the building materials, I believe, to um, better comply with the recent changes in the right. state I law. I mean, this, this is a technical correction substitute. Okay, so Council Member O'Connell has moved the substitute on 869 as properly seconded. Any discussion on the substitute? Seeing none, all those in favor of the substitute say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Substitutes adopted. So now you're on 868 and 869 as substituted. Yep. Council Member O'Connell. like to move both bills, please. Okay, so Council Member O'Connell has moved both bills properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of those two bills say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, both those bills are adopted on second reading. Uh, we're on um, B. Uh, we're on item number 17, BL 2021-887 by Council Member Parker. This is an ordinance to authorize building material restrictions and requirements for BL 2021-787, proposed specific plan zoning district located at 1505, 1509, 1511, 1513, 1601, 1603 Dickerson Pike, 1600, 1608, 1612, and 1616 Luton Street and Dickerson Pike unnumbered. 
proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of building. Councilmember Parker, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, this one is a materials authorization for a bill that we've already had a zoning hearing on. That bill remains on second reading. Um, but in accordance with that new state law, this bill has been brought forward and also requires a public hearing. Um, I have, I think, a couple dozen, maybe more constituents here tonight um, with regards to this bill. And in speaking with them, it is my understanding that we would prefer to defer this two meetings to the first meeting in November, as well as the public hearing to that date. So hearing no objections in the gallery, that's what I will move is to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, the, so the motion is just to make sure everybody understands. Councilmember Parker is, we're not having a public hearing tonight. We're moving this to defer to the first meeting in November, which will be the next public hearing night. Okay, so that is the motion. Uh, the motion is to def uh, not have the public hearing, but defer this to the first meeting in November. Yes, Vice Mayor. That's the motion, properly seconded. Discussion on the motion. Okay, seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the deferral to the first meeting of November say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the motion to defer is uh, passed. That's on 887, okay? Okay. Okay, so we are on... Uh, we're on uh, item number 21. This is Bill 2021-891 by Councilmember O'Connell. Ordinance to authorize building material restrictions requirements for Bill 2021-862. Proposed specific plan zoning district located at 1301 Herman Street, southwest corner of Herman Street and 12th Avenue North, 2.11 acres. Proposed ordinance to require certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Councilmember O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. We've got amendments coming on related uh, packages. So I'm going to uh, look into Mr. Wilkinson. I think we're, these are the two we're withdrawing, right? Oh, that's over here. Maybe Lisa. That's my understanding. Is that right? Yeah, yes. I think okay. uh, I'm, I'm going to withdraw both of these bills. Okay. So that's also Bill 2021-892? Yes, sir. Okay. So 891-892 withdrawn. Correct? Okay. We're on uh, item number 23, Bill 2021-893 by Council Member Parker. Ordinance to amend um, Title 17 by change from RS, RS5 to RM20A zoning for property located at 123 Elmhurst Avenue, northwest corner of Lucille Street, Elmhurst Avenue. It's 0.13 acres. Council Member Parker is out of the room, but it's my understanding that there are the notices did not go out on this, so it has to be for, to the first meeting in November anyway. Correct. All right. So um, this uh, this gets deferred to the first meeting in November. Uh, item number 24 by Council Member Sledge, BL 2021 894. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by applying a neighborhood landmark overlay district privately located 2400 10th Avenue South, southeast corner of Carruthers Avenue, 10th Avenue South, zoned R8 and located within the Waverly Belmont Neighborhood Conservation District. It's 1.1 acres. Council Member Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Please open the public hearing. Okay, declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those here who are here in favor of 2021 894. See, a show of hands to the right. Uh, show of hands of those who are here in opposition to 894. Don't see anybody in opposition. Those in favor wish to speak? All right, declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Sledge, you're on your bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move approval. Councilmember Sledge moves for approval, properly seconded. Any discussion on 894? Seeing none, all those in favor of 894 pass it on second reading, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no, you adopt. Um, item number 25 can be taken with item number 26. This is by Councilmember Toombs. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from RM4 to SP zoning for property located at 503 West Trinity Lane, approximately 100 feet east of Old Matthews Road, 4.96 acres. And 896, which is item 26. Ordinance to authorize building material restrictions requirements for BL 2021-895. Proposed specific plan zoning district okay, located at 503 yeah. West Trinity Lane, approximately 100 feet east of Old Matthews Road, 4.96 acres. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Councilmember Toombs, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Request open the public hearing. Okay, to clear the public hearing open, we're on 895 and 896. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of either one of those two bills. 
Okay, see a hands, a number of hands up. Show of hands of those who are in opposition to either of those two bills. <coughs> see no hands up. Anybody in favor wish to speak? Okay, declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Toombs, you're on your two bills. Move for approval. Uh, Councilmember Toombs has moved for approval of 895 and 896 for passage on second reading. Uh, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of those two bills, 895 and 896, for passage on second reading, say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, both those bills pass. Uh, we're on item number 27. This is by Council Member Sepulveda, an ordinance to amend Title 17. By applying a textual overlay district, various properties located east of Nolensville Pike, zone R10, R15, R20, and R10, RS10, 136.48 acres. Council Member Sepulveda, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Open up the public hearing. Okay, declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of the measure. Okay, show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the measure. Okay, so there's opposition to it. All right, uh, those in favor wish to speak. If you would, come up to the podium. Uh, need your name, um, address, mm -hmm. and then you'll have two minutes in which to speak. Anybody, you want to speak in favor? There you go. Uh, name, address, and then you'll have two minutes in which to speak. Tucker Price, 5001 Madeline Drive, Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, I do support the conceptual overlay for the Fairlane District. With in regards to the neighbors, I do support their right to build on to their property to make it what they want. Uh, we're just trying to protect from tall and skinnies running rampant through the area. Um, that's it. I defer. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else in favor wish to speak? Okay, those who are in opposition, if you uh, wish to speak, come on up. Um, there were a couple of hands. Go ahead and line up. Uh, just come up to the, uh, the microphone. Uh, need your name, address, and then you'll have two minutes in which to speak. Again, if you're in opposition, come on up and go ahead and get in line. Uh, good evening, uh, Speaker and Council. My name is Forrest White. I'm at 320 Melpar Drive. Um, I have one complaint about the proposal, and that is that if you have a single driveway, you are not permitted under this proposal to widen it for two cars uh, across. And uh, considering that almost everyone in the neighborhood has more than one vehicle, I think this needs to be struck from the proposal that the ability to widen a driveway should be allowed even if you only have a single car drive driveway entering your property. I actually have two properties uh, on this. The second property is actually behind me and it's divided on the map sketch, but that's not really uh, pertinent to this issue. Um, so what I'm really saying is I oppose this specific aspect. Uh, the overlay itself doesn't seem terribly bad to me, uh, but the restriction on the driveways is gonna mean a lot of muddy uh, lawns because people are parking on the lawn at this time. Uh, that's uh, that's basically it. I right. like that st uh, struck. All from right. Thank, thank, thank you, Mr. White. Uh, next speaker, uh, name, address, and you'll have two minutes in which to speak. Hello, my name is Lara Lane, three five one Melpar Drive. Um, I'm here today speaking against applying the contextual overlay district to Fairline Park. The reason why I am against this is because it applies restrictions that would prevent us from rebuilding our home to its current square footage. Um, council members, I would like to point out that this neighborhood was established in the late 1950s where the base homes in the neighborhood that have not been added onto are about 950 square feet or so. Um, so for example, my neighbors on either side um, have not added on to their home, so they're about 950 square feet. Um, so, sorry, I'm really nervous. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, Take your time. So, um, so, so basically, this proposal limits uh, what I can do to my home in two ways. Um, for, first, for example, um, you know, if our home was destroyed more than 50% under this overlay, we would not be able to build back um, to its current square footage. We would have to be build back less than that. And the other thing is that um, 
if the overlay was proposed or, or passed, um, we would not be able to add any additional square footage to our house. Um, so as it stands with um, Melpar as it is, there are no homes on our street that um, would actually be able to be able to be split um, to build these tall and skinny. So we have talked with a lot of our neighbors on Melpar and we are actually, um, I guess, what you would call a substitution or something where we can be written out of this and just take Melpar off because it doesn't really um, affect us as much. Thank you. All right, thank you for coming. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, name, address, two minutes. My name is <clears throat> Leslie Paoni, and I live at... You, you may want to get a little closer to the microphone. There you go. My name is Leslie Paoni, and I live at 351 Melpar. I'm against this because right now there's at least 13 houses on Melpar that cannot be rebuilt as they are if they were destroyed. Mr. Tucker's house over there on Madeline cannot be rebuilt. It's too big and it has a U-shaped driveway, which this will eliminate. I think the best idea would be to remove Melpar and let the people that want this have this, but there are no lots that can be split on Melpar, so there's no reason to add unneeded restrictions to us with no benefit, and that's it. All right, all right, thank you for being here. Uh, next speaker. Uh, name, address, and you've got two minutes in which to speak. And you may want to pull that microphone a little closer. My name is Michael Bridges. I'm at 349 Mail Park Drive. And I'm against this because if something falls on my house or it catches fire, tornado or anything, I won't be able to rebuild. And basically everything was said of my concerns, and I'm against it. All right. Thank All right. You. Thank you. Uh, next speaker. Welcome, name, address, two minutes. Thank you, my name is Benny Bridges. I also live at 349 Mail Park Drive. I have two concerns. The first one is, is that this is the only information that I received about this contextual overlay. And I was given more information from a neighbor, not my council member. I was told that many people in our neighborhood was informed about this contextual overlay proposal and I have spoken to other members and they are unaware of it. I was also told that there are two other meetings that were convened about this contextual overlay. I've been in contact with our office and I was never informed about this contextual overlay until this letter came into the mail, until we saw the signs. And the second is I thought I was here to reaffirm and confirm a deferment. I thought we were going to come here, find out that it would be deferred so we can have a community meeting because our neighborhood is uninformed about this contextual overlay. Please do not vote or confirm this contextual overlay. Thank you for your time. All right, thank you, Ms. Bridges. Anybody else wishing to be heard on this one? All right, declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Sepulveda, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor, and thank you to everyone from District 30 that came out. Um, I, I, I think there, there are several questions that need some clarification. Um, I, Matt and I have been on the phone with a couple of constituents that uh, we were able to answer certain things. I think there's also confusion uh, as to how you could build back. You could build back up to the current square footage. Um, we are deferring this. Um, we had two community meetings. Um, I, as you all know, it, it, we don't have a whole lot of money and resources. Um, I did have an intern flyer the neighborhood. I did robocalls. It was two in-person meetings. I think one of them is up online on Facebook as well. Um, I, I, I think that it's, it's a little hard. So I'm trying to figure out how to reach the people that we weren't able to reach. I, for, for those of y'all that know when you do a robocall, you could only leave a message at home phone. So anyone who doesn't have a home phone doesn't get that message. Um, and so I, I, I'm, I'm going to defer 
two meetings in order to have a third community meeting. Uh, the third community meeting will be, and this was confirmed today, the details on September 21st at Christ Lutheran Church at 6 p.m. And I'll be sending out the details again on, on my newsletter, which is in English and in Spanish, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and it's also on my website. Um, so I, I'd like to move to defer two meetings. Okay, so the, the council member has moved to defer this two meetings. Just for those who are understanding, uh, we're not voting on second reading, we're, we're deferring the bill. Council Member Sepulveda, would you clarify when your meeting is? I thought you said September, but we I'm, weren't sure. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I mean this month, so October, October. Okay. 21st, yes sir. Okay, all right, so the, again, for those of you in the audience that are interested in this one, um, what you've been hearing through this is that typically we go ahead and vote on second reading. Councilmember Sepulveda is deferring the vote on second reading for two meetings. Okay, so we're not voting tonight. We're just simply deferring uh, that vote for two meetings. That's what's going on. Properly seconded discussion on the deferral motion. Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral motion uh, for two meetings say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, this uh, measure is deferred two meetings, so we again, we did not vote on it on second reading. We deferred the second reading for two meetings. Uh, we're on item number 28, BL 2021, 898 by Council Member Parker. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from RS 10 and RM 15A to RM 15A and S zoning for pipes located at 509, 511, 513 East Trinity Lane, approximately 270 feet east of Jones Avenue. It's 0.92 acres. Council Member Parker, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Okay, declare the public hearing open. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure. Okay, show of hands of those who are here in opposition of this measure. Uh, I don't see anybody in opposition. Anybody in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Parker, you're on your bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move for approval. Okay, so Councilman Parker has moved for approval on second reading. This is 898, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, nope, you adopt. We're on item number 29, Council Member Sledge. Uh, BL 2021-899, Ordinance to Amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code. By change of rezone from IWD to MUNANS, zoning for properties located at 212 Hart Street, portion of property located at 1264 3rd Avenue South, at the northeast corner of Hart Street and 3rd Avenue South, 0.54 acres. Council Member Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Please open the public hearing. Declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of 2021-899. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to 899. The no hands either way. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Sledge, you're on your bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move approval. Okay, Councilmember Sledge moves his approval of 899. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of 899 on second reading say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt. We're on BL 2021-900. This is item number 30. It can be taken with item 31. Uh, it's an ordinance, uh, 900 is an ordinance to amend title 17. But change from RS 7.5 and MUGA to SP zoning for property located at Dickerson Pike unnumbered, approximately 380 feet west of Dickerson Pike, 7.22 acres. Uh, and then BL 2021-901, also by Council Member Toombs, an, author, uh, an ordinance to authorize building material restrictions and requirements for BL 2021-900, proposed specific plan zoning district located at Dickerson Pike, unnumbered 380 feet west of Dickerson Pike, 7.22 acres. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Council Member Toombs, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Request open a public hearing. Okay. Um, uh, so I'm going to uh, open the public hearings on 900 and 901. Uh, show of hands of those who are here in favor of the measure. Okay. And then a show of hands of those who are in opposition to the measure. Okay. So we've got hands on both. So we start with those in favor. Uh, those in favor wish to speak. If you would, please come on up. Come on back to that back microphone. Are you in opposition or in favor, sir? I'm in, I'm in opposition. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, we, we start with those in favor, and then we'll get to those in opposition. 
Uh, those in favor, if you would, name, address, and then you'll have two minutes in which to speak. Jeff Hines with 128 Glen Rock Drive, Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, I represent the uh, development uh, partnership on this one. Uh, we did hold a public meeting on this. Uh, there was no opposition that appeared at that meeting. And we have worked uh, on this site closely with Planning Commission uh, to adopt this overlay. Part of this is fulfilling the uh, major and collector street plan for the extension of a public roadway through this property. So there are multiple benefits. The front portion of this site already had MUGA zoning, uh, which would allow greater intensity and in development than what is being proposed. The rear portion of this site was the RS 7.5 which would be brought under the SP overlay, uh, which controls the height, the massing, a lot of other elements of this property. So we'd ask for you to uh, move it approved on second reading. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, next speaker. <coughs> Excuse me. You've got uh, name, address, and you'll have two minutes in which to speak. Thank you, Madison Haynes, 1212 Laurel Street. I also represent the developer in this matter and just wanted to reiterate that it passed on the Planning Commission's consent agenda, six to zero. We met with Councilman Toombs prior to having our community meeting that was held um, in a hybrid format, both virtually and in person, and that all aspects of this project are consistent with the community plan. All right, thank you. Next speaker. Name, address, two minutes. Good evening. I'm Liz Palmer. Uh, I live at 124 Clarendon Avenue, and I'm representing Middle Street Partners. Um, i just like to say we've worked with Councilwoman Toombs. Uh, we have held uh, a meeting, and, you know, as Jeff reiterated, we are definitely looking forward to doing a successful development that is, you know, in keeping with the neighborhood um, and working with tombs to ensure that we do that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Palmer. Anybody else wishing to speak in favor of the measure? Okay. Those who are in opposition measure, come on up. Uh, name, address, and you'll have two minutes in which to speak. Uh, my name is Latroy Bozeman. I live at 613 Mary Lodge Court, um, Nashville, Tennessee, 37207. Um, this is the only letter that I have that's came in the mail, and that's why I'm here. So... I'm opposing to defer it until I can at least understand what's going on. And that's why I'm here. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Bozeman. Anybody else wishing to speak in opposition? Okay. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Move for approval. Okay, so you've got two bills, 900 and 901. Looks like you may have a substitute on 900. It's a planning substitute. A planning substitute. You don't, uh, uh, you don't have to put it on tonight. Hold on. Planning? <laughs> um, yes, the planning substitute adds some conditions that were part of the uh, planning commission approval. So sometimes when bills get filed, early like this one, then we have to substitute them to add those conditions in. So that's what it was. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, Councilmember Toombs, if you want, we can adopt the substitute to get it right. Move the substitute. Okay. So, Councilmember Toombs has moved the substitute on 900 properly. Seconded. Uh, Director Zeitlin, do you know what this uh, the substitute does on this one? On, on 900? On 900. Yeah. Uh -oh. I can go back to planning. Yeah. Okay. Back to planning? Yeah, it just adds several conditions that were included for the Planning Commission. Okay. Um, or by the Planning Commission. Apologies. Yes. Oh, okay. So, Council Member Toombs has moved the substitute, properly seconded. Any discussion on the substitute? Seeing none, all those in favor of the substitute say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Substitute's adopted. Okay. Now, Council Member Toombs, you're on 2021-900 as substituted and 901. Move for approval. Okay. So, Council Member Toombs has moved for approval on both. Properly seconded. Any discussion on this? Seeing none, all those in favor of 900 as substitute in 901 say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, both those bills are adopted. Uh, sir, what that means is, um, and Council Member Toombs may want to, is going to probably come back there and talk to you, okay? We're on uh, item number 32, Bill 2021 902 by Council Member Parker. 
Uh, ordinance amendment title 17 by changing SP to RS5 zoning for a portion of property located at 1801 Meridian Street, approximately 465 feet east of Meridian Street. It's 0.20 acres. Councilman Parker, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing. Declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of the measure. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition of this measure. Seeing nobody on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Councilor and Parker, you're on your bill. Thank you. I'd like to move for approval. Okay. Motion is to approve properly. Seconded. Any discussion on this bill? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed? No. You adopt. We're on uh, BL 2021-903 by Council no, Member Murphy, and this can be taken with item number 34. The ordinance amend Title 17 by amending the Bowling House Neighborhood Conservation Overlay District to include properties located at 4200 through 4412 Utah Avenue and 4200 through 4402 Nebraska Avenue, zone RS 7.5. It's 13.87 acres. And then BL 2021-904 by Councilman Murphy, ordinance to authorize building material restrictions requirements for BL 2021-903, proposed amendment to the Bowling House Neighborhood Conservation Overlay Districts Include properties located at 4200 through 4412 Utah Avenue and 4200 through 4402 Nebraska Avenue is 13.87 acres. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of the buildings. Councilmember Murphy, you are recognized. Thank you. Due to a notice issue, we're going to have to defer these bills. We left off some pesky about three addresses on side streets. Um, and, but what I'd like to do is go ahead and put the substitute on that adjusts the map. And so with that, I'd like to move the substitute for 2021-903. Uh, okay, so Councilor Mayor Murphy has moved the substitute on 903, properly seconded discussion. Just to defer the rest after that. Oh, uh, do you want to explain what the substitute oh, does? Yes, as I, as I just said, it adjusts the map and takes out part of the 42nd hundred block of Utah. Okay, so that's the substitute. And I'm sorry, and on 42nd Avenue as well. Okay. So Councilman Murphy has described the substitute is properly seconded. The motion is to adopt. Um, any discussion on the substitute? Seeing none, all those in favor of the substitute say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Substitute's adopted. Now you're on 2021-903 as substituted and 904. Thank you. With that, I'd like to, um, so we are properly noticed. Oh, okay. I don't know, I'm getting lag signals. Okay, so uh, we're seeing that it looks like there's a substitute also on 904. Is it it does the same thing. It's it the same substitute. The same All right, so um, let's get that one done too, and then you, okay. can, then you can do whatever you want with the bills. Uh, yeah. so the oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see that listed on here. That is correct. Okay. Let me go ahead and move the substitute for 2021-904. Okay, so Council Member Murphy has moved the substitute on 904. Properly seconded. It's the same explanation as the other one. Uh, any discussion on the substitute ordinance on 904? Seeing none, we're ready to vote on nine, uh, the substitute on 904. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. 904 is substituted. Now you're on 903 and 904, both as substituted. Councilor Murphy. Perfect. So we are going to, um, the will of the body, defer these to the first meeting in November so they can be properly noticed with all addresses included that need to be. All right, so they're both moved to the defer to the first meeting in December? November. November, okay. We're having trouble with months tonight. All right, sorry. Thank you. I remember when November is. Uh, it's right after October. So uh, the motion is to defer both those bills to the first meeting in November, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Uh, we are now on item number 35. BL 2021-905 by Council Member Evans. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing AR2A to RS20 zoning. Property located at 3216 Earhart Road. Eastern terminus of Buntington Way Drive, 2.93 acres. Council Member Evans, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I need to move uh, my public hearing and bill to the first meeting in November. All right. So, um, so because of notices, you got to defer. Correct. First meeting in November, the motion is to defer to the first meeting in November. Properly seconded. Um, any discussion on the deferral motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. Uh, opposed, no. Uh, this one, 2021-905, is deferred to the first meeting in November. 
Uh, we're on BL 2021-906 by Council Member Ro Rosenberg and Bradford. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from AR 2A to R 80 zoning for property located at 7848 McCrory Lane, approximately 385 feet south of Highway 70, 42.24 acres. <coughs> Excuse me, Council Member Rosenberg, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the Planning Commission hasn't had an opportunity to weigh in on this yet, so I'd like to defer to the first meeting in November, please. All right, so the motion is to defer to the first meeting in November. Properly seconded. Any discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral motion to the first meeting in November say aye. Opposed, no. Um, that bill is deferred to the first meeting in November. Um, items number 37 and 38 can be taken together, BL 2021 907 and 908 by Council Member O'Connell and um, Sledge. Ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing RR to SP zoning for properties at 121 Madison Street, southeast corner of 2nd Avenue, north of Madison Street, 1.42 acres, permit self storage use, and uh, 908, ordinance to authorize building material restrictions. Requirements for BL 2021-907, proposed specific plan zoning district located at 121 Madison Street, southeast corner of 2nd Avenue. Uh, proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Council Member Sledge, uh, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Please open the public hearing. Okay, so both of these were disapproved, is my understanding. Yes. Okay, so we're going to need to see some slides. Ms. Milligan, you're recognized. This is a request for an SP at 121 Madison Street. Staff recommendation, recommendation is to rezone from IR and IG to SP to permit self-service storage use. The Planning Commission recommendation was to disapprove. The properties are currently zoned IR and IG. It's split zoned uh, just about right down the middle. The proposed zoning of the property is SP, and the SP is proposed to permit an expansion of an existing self-service storage facility. Uh, this is showing the existing site plan. The existing building is located at the corner of 2nd, and then the proposed building would be located in the rear where there is currently a parking lot. Um, this is a better shot showing the existing uh, structure along the corner of the building and the parking lot to the rear. Uh, this proposal, um, the, flo the floor area ratio is something that we talked about a lot with this proposal. Um, the floor area rate, what floor area ratio is, is the amount of square footage of a building that is allowed to be built on a site. The existing self-service storage use and the proposed self-storage use are permitted under the existing zoning. In other words, both IR and IG permit self-service storage. Um, the, the site is approximately 1.42 acres in size, and the FAR of both IG and IR are the same at 0.6. What this means is that the existing site would permit approximately 37,000 square feet of self-service storage. The exi existing structure on the site is approximately 92,000, um, which is an FAR of 1.5. Um, the proposed SP would permit an additional 29,000 square feet, resulting in approximately an FAR of two, roughly. Um, the existing structure was permitted at 92,000. Uh, there was an error in the permitting that permitted it to be larger than what, what should have been permitted by the code. The land use policy for the area is T4 Urban Mixed Use Neighborhood Policy. It's located within a broader area of urban mixed use neighborhood in the Germantown neighborhood. The intent of the policy is to create and enhance urban mixed use neighborhoods. It includes moderate to high density residential, mixed use and commercial there with high levels of connectivity and complete street networks. The existing zonings of IR and IG are not compatible with the land use policy of mixed use neighborhood. Uh, the existing use is also incompatible with the policy. Therefore, Planning Commission recommended disapproval of the request. Thank you, Ms. Milligan. Uh, Councilmember Sledge, you're recognized on your two bills. Thank you, Vice Mayor. It's a point of clarification. Councilmember O'Connell had to attend to a matter, so I, he asked me to sign on to this bill. So with that, I'd renew my request to open the public hearing. 
Okay, I recognize that you weren't Councilmember O'Connell. I knew that. Appreciate that. Um, all right, so um, we're going to open the public hearing on 907 and 908. Uh, show of hands of those who are here in favor of those two measures. Okay, show of hands of those who are in opposition of those two measures. Seeing nobody in opposition, those in favor wish to speak. Okay, declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'll move approval. All right, so Councilmember Sledge has moved approval of uh, 907 and 908 on second reading, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of those uh, passage on second reading say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, both those bills pass. <clears throat> We're on item number 39, BL 2021-909 by Council Member O'Connell and Sledge. Uh, <laughs> you don't I, have this? I did not sign on to this one, but I'm happy to carry it if requested. I don't know what the details of this one, to be quite honest. Um, let me ask, is there anybody here in the back on this particular bill on 909? All right, um, Council Member Sledge, come up here for All right, so we're going to move that one down to the hill, so we move it down one spot. Uh, we'll go to BL 2021-910 by Council Member Toombs. Uh, this is an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the uh, Metropolitan Code by change from RS 7.5 to R8 zoning for property located at 2412 Old Matthews Road, northwest corner of Old Matthews Road and Trinity Hills Parkway, 0.27 acres. Council Member Toombs, uh, you are recognized on your bill. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Request to open the public hearing. Okay, to clear the public hearing open, we are on Bill 2021-910. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this measure. Okay, I don't see anybody on either side. To close the public hearing closed, Councilmember Toombs, you're recognized. Move for approval. So Councilmember Toombs has moved for approval on BL 2021-910, properly seconded. Any discussion on BL 2021-910? Seeing none, all those in favor of passage of 2021-910 on second reading say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, bill passes. Now we're back to BL 2021-909 by Councilmember O'Connell and it looks like Councilmember Sledge. Ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code by changing IWD to RM40ANS zoning for properties located at 1301, 1307, 1309, and 1403 Lebanon Pike. Lebanon Pike unnumbered approximately 850 feet west of Spence Lane at 15.56 acres. Councilmember Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Request to open the public hearing. Okay, to clear the public hearing open, a show of hands of those who are here in favor of 909. There he is. A uh, show of hands of those who are here in opposition to 909. Don't see anybody in opposition. Uh, those in favor wish to speak? Nope. Declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'll move approval. Okay, so Council Member Sledge has moved approval of 2021-909 on second reading, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. 2021-909 passes on second reading. Okay.
We're on to resolutions on consent. Here are the items currently on consent. RS 2021-1163. 1167, 1168, 1169, 1170, 1171, 1172, 1173, 1175, 1176, 1177, 1178, 1180, 1181, 1182, and 1183. Do any of these need to be pulled? Council Member Withers. Thank you so much, Mr. Uh, Pro Tem. Could I please pull uh, item 42, RS 2021 1163? 1163. 1163. Yep. Okay. Any others? All right. Oh, sorry, Council Member Hurt. No, 1179 is not on consent. Okay. <laughs> okay. Do it on one motion, okay. Okay, here we go. We're pulling 1163 off. Everything else is staying on. RS 2021 1167 approves a grant from the Tennessee Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services to state trial courts to provide Tennessee Highway Safety Office recovery enhancements to existing recovery court programs and services. That's Allen and Toombs. RS 2021 1168, Allen and Toombs approves a grant between the Tennessee Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services to Metro Government for court ordered evaluations and treatment for defendants charged with misdemeanor crimes. RS 2021 1169, Allen, Bradford, and Stiles authorizes Fairgrounds Nashville and Municipal Auditorium to accept community development block grant funds from the Metropolitan. De Development and Housing Agency. RS 2021 1170, O'Connell, Allen, Bradford, and Stiles approves the terms of a cooperative purchasing master agreement for portable automatic seating risers for the Nashville Municipal Auditorium. RS 2021 1171, Allen and Young approves a contract between Metro Government and New Origin Systems, Inc to provide annual maintenance, support, and necessary upgrades for various mission critical applications for public works. RS 2021 1172, Parker Allen and Welsh authorizes the mayor to submit the Davidson, Nashville Davidson CARES Act Substantial Amendment 3 to the 2019-2020 Annual Action Plan to the 2018-2023 Consolidated Plan for Housing and Community Development to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. RS 2021 1173 authorizes the Metropolitan Development and Housing Agency to enter into a pilot agreement and accept payments in lieu of ad valorem taxes with respect to a multifamily housing project located at 900 Dickerson Pike. RS 2021 1175 Hancock approves an, am an amendment to a contract between Metro Government and Civic Engineering and Information Technologies, Inc. RS 2021 1176, Allen, Welsh, Stiles, Tombs, and Suara approves American Rescue Plan Act grant funds from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services to the Metro Action Commission to support activities per pertaining to the prevention, preparation, and or response to the coronavirus disease. RS 2021 1177, Allen, Bradford, Stiles, and Tombs approves a promotion of the arts grant from the National Endowment for the Arts to the Metro Nashville Arts Commission to support a permanent public art lighting installation and an artist residency program in North Nashville. RS 2021 1178, Allen, Evans, Stiles, Tombs, Welsh, and Suara 
approves a community health workers for public health response and resilient grant from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention to the Metro Board of Health to address COVID-19 health disparities in the Nashville area. RS 2021-1180, Allen and Evans, approves a grant from the Tennessee Department of Safety and Homeland Security to the Metro Nashville Police Department to continue the enhanced DUI enforcement initiative and target distracted driving and seatbelt enforcement. RS 2021-1181, Mendez, Toombs, Roten, Benedict, and others honors the life of Tennessee Supreme Court Justice Cornelia A. Clark. RS 2021-1182 by Sledge honors the life of Trevecca Nazarene University President, Dr. Homer J. Adams. And RS 2021-1183 recognizes October as Italian American Heritage Month and celebrates the contribution and achievements of Italian Americans. That's Suara, Taylor, Johnston, Syracuse, and Hurt. Committee reports, affordable housing, Councilman Parker. Uh, Mr. Pro Tem, on RS 2021-1166, we voted 7-4-0 against. Uh, on RS 2021-1172, affordable housing voted 8-4-0 against. On RS 2021-1173, um, affordable housing voted 8-4-0 against. And on okay. RS... Tw I think those are the only two on consent. Is that Thank it? you. Okay. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Council, Member, uh, Council Member Allen. Thank you, Mr. Pro Tem. Uh, budget and Finance voted 13 in favor and zero against on consent. RS 2021 1167, 1168, 1169, 1170. Um, on 1171, 12 in favor, zero against. I'm sorry, that's not the abstention. That was also 13 in favor, zero against. 1172, 12 in favor, zero against. 1173, 12 in favor, zero against. 1177, 11 in favor, zero against. 1178, 11 in favor, zero against. 1179, 12 in favor, zero against, and one abstaining. And 1180, 13 in favor, zero against. Thank you. Do you have 1176, Council 1176 Member? is, I'm sorry, I thought that was not on consent. That was 10 in favor, zero against. Great. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Hancock. On RS 2021, 1175, seven in favor, zero against to approve. Thank you. Council Member Welsh. Thank you, Mr. Pro Tem. Um, Human Services voted on RS 2021, 1176. Uh, for approval, six four zero against. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Bradford. Thank you, Pro Tem. The inaugural meeting of our Public Facilities Arts and Culture met and approved RS 2021 1169, 1170, and 1177. Um, eight and four zero against on the first two, and six in favor, none against on the on 1177. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Evans. Thank you, Mr. Pro Tem. Uh, public Health and Safety met, and for RS 2021, 1178, voted seven in favor, zero against. And then for RS 2021, 1180, also seven in favor, zero against. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Vircher. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On RS-2021 rules and confirmations, uh, I'm sorry, RS-2021-1181 rules and confirmations voted, uh, recommended approval 640 against. And on RS-2021-1182 and 1183 uh, rules and confirmation voted 740 uh, against on both. Thank you, Council Member. And Council Member Young, Transportation and Infrastructure. Thank you, Pro Tem. Uh, we recommended RS 2021-1171, 10 in favor, zero against. Thank you. Would you make a motion to approve, please? Motion to approve. Is there a second? Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? You adopt the consent agenda. Thank you.
take up the measures that were not on the consent uh, agenda. The first one is item number 41, which is RS 2021-1125 by Council Members Nash, Bradford, and Stiles. This is a resolution requesting the Nashville Department of Transportation and Multimodal Infrastructure study, uh, conduct a study to determine the feasibility and cost of contracting with the state of Tennessee to allow for NDOT to maintain state routes in Davidson County. Councilmember Nash, you're recognized. Thank you. Committee reports, please. Uh, transportation, Councilmember Young. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, there was a substitute which the committee voted uh, to recommend 11 to 0. Okay, and then so you voted the substitute of three yes. eleven to zero. Yes, we voted to recommend as substitute eleven to zero. All right, back to you, Council Member Nash. You're recognized. Uh, the reason this came up is um, uh, a stretch in Owensville Road, for instance, has a grass median, and when it gets tall, so folks can't see to turn in to <laughs> make a left turn, they call me, right. and then I find out that it belongs to the state to maintain, and then during that conversation at committee, we did find uh, that Goodlettsville, for instance. Uh, does contract with the state to maintain some of the exits uh, around the interstate to make it look nice and presentable for, for the community of Goodlettsville. Uh, Council Member Henderson uh, introduced a, a very friendly uh, substitute, and I will yield to her to uh, talk about the substitute. All right, Council Member Henderson, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, the, the substitute basically just is a little bit of a language change because there have been some concern uh, on committee about the uh, potential perceived magnitude of the resolution as, as previously written, um, requiring a study and um, referring kind of to the county as a whole. Um, this just um, says, you know, to for the department to assess the feasibility uh, based on kind of ongoing uh, conversations. Um, it replaces some language and it says some roads um, that way we can kind of find some strategic opportunities uh, and, and pilot some things. Um, so it's just a little bit of, of semantics, but it seemed to be in the spirit of the previous committee discussion. Um, and with that, I just yield back to Chair Nash. All right, back to you, Council Member Nash. Move for approval. All right, so Council Member uh, Nash has moved for approval of the substitute, properly seconded. Discussion on the substitute, Council Member Sledge? You're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Having not been party to the committee conversation, this might be a conversation or a question for Councilmember Henderson or Councilmember Nash. Um, I was curious, I don't think the substitute addresses sort of how NDOT would propose to conduct this study as far as the personnel and hours dedicated. Was there any discussion of that in committee? Uh, who wants to answer, Councilmember Nash? You're right. That was discussed at committee. It's it's something they can do in house. They're already in discussions with the state personnel. It's not going to be no consultants being called in. Uh, I guess I hope that answers your question, Councilmember Sledge. Yeah, that's helpful. I just we've been in the conversations this week where it's it's. I have a lot of questions about capacity right now, about NDOT and following through. So I just want to make sure that wasn't going to take away from those efforts. Thank you, Vice Mayor. All right. Thank you, Council Member. So we're still on um, substitute resolution, the passage of the substitute resolution. Any other discussion on the substitute resolution? Okay. So Council Member Nash has moved the substitute, properly seconded. All those in favor of the substitute say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Substitutes adopted. Council Member Nash, you're on your resolution as substituted. Move approval as substituted. Council Member Nash has moved approval of RS 2021-1125 as substituted, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. It is adopted. <clears throat> We're on RS 2021-1163. That got bumped off consent. Resolution recognizing Judge William Higgins for his 50 years of service to Nashville and Davidson County upon the occasion of his retirement. Council Member Murphy, you're recognized. Yes, thank you. Um, we had a little confusion on signing on and, and keeping it on consent, but that is okay. I think most of us in here know of Judge Higgins' service. Um, and so with that, I would like to move for passage and then also request that everyone voting in the affirmative is listed as a co-sponsor. All right, so we've got Murphy, Mendez, and Allen and Hurt already on. Uh, everybody voting in favor will be listed as a sponsor. 
Yes. Uh, so the, the motion is to go ahead and approve and have everybody sign on. Proper motion, proper second. Any discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. Again, everybody voting in favor will be listed as a sponsor. We're on RS-2021-1163. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. And um, thank you for uh, Judge Higgins. Quite a guy, quite a man. Uh, we are on uh, RS-2021-1166 by Council Member O'Connell, Parker, Allen, and others. Uh, resolution accepting a donation from the Congress Group in the amount of $2.5 million, contribution to the Barnes Housing Trust Fund, proving a donation from the Congress Group in the amount of $500,000 to a to-be-formed nonprofit entity for the benefit of Wharf Park. Council Member O'Connell, uh, this is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. And request committee reports, please. Affordable housing, Council Member Parker. Uh, it is 1166. Um, affordable housing recommended 740 against. Okay. Uh, budget and finance, Council Member Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and finance uh, approved, uh, recommended approval 13 in favor, zero against. All right. And Council Member Bradford, public facilities. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Public facilities voted 840 against for a one meeting deferral. Council Member uh, O'Connell. I imagine that's deferred by rule, so yeah, I guess that's, we'll I'm do that. Yeah, coming back to you. So that's a deferral by rule, so it's automatically deferred one meeting, okay? Let's see. All right, let's see where we are. All right, we are now on uh, item number 51, RS-2021-1174. Uh, Council Member Sledge, Parker, Allen, and Welsh. Resolution authorizing the Metropolitan Development, Development and Housing Agency to negotiate and enter into a pilot agreement set payments in lieu of ad valorem taxes with respect to a multifamily housing project located at 300 Rains Avenue, known as Fairground Site C. Council Member Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Uh, hold on. Uh, affordable housing, Council Member Parker. Affordable housing recommended uh, 940 against. Uh, budget and Finance, Council Member Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance recommended approval 10 in favor, one, one against. All right. Uh, Council Member Sledge, back to you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Just move approval. Okay. So the motion is to approve um, Resolution RS 2021 1174, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Okay, so we have one no. Uh, it's uh, Council Member Glover. Uh, we can recognize that as the one no. Okay. All right, so RS 2021 1174 passes. Uh, item number 56, RS 2021 1179 by Council Member Allen, Evans, Bradford, and others. A resolution approving Amendment 1 to a grant from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services to the Metropolitan Government, acting by and through the Metropolitan Board of Health to provide for the prevention, surveillance, diagnosis, and treatment of HIV AIDS and administer a minority AIDS initiative program. Council Member Allen, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, do I need to ask for committee reports? Yep, you've okay. got And then two. I'll give it. Uh, you've got one in uh, public health and safety. Council member, let me go to you first, Council member Allen for budget and finance. Thank you. Budget and finance recommended approval, 12 in favor, and Council member Hurt abstained. Okay. And Council member Evans, you're recognized for public health and safety. Uh, public health and safety recommended zero in favor, I'm sorry, seven in favor, zero against. All right. Thank you. Back to you, Council member Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Move for approval. Move for approval. This is on RS 2021-1179, uh, excuse me, for passage. Um, Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of RS-2021-1179 say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. And um, I think we had one, well. Okay, all right. <clears throat> all right, so RS-2021-1179 passes. Um, and I think that takes us to uh, resolutions filed uh, timely, we have a late resolution. This is RS-2021, uh, unnumbered by Council Member Allen and Welsh. Uh, resolution approving amendment went to a homeless management information system capacity building project grant agreement between the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development and the Metropolitan Government through the Social Service Science, 
sorry, social services department to contribute to the national effort to end homelessness. Council Member Allen, you are recognized on your late resolution. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. All right, let's go, um, because it's a late resolution, I think I'd go to rules. Uh, Council Member Virtue, did this come before you all? Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. It did, and there was no objection. All right, so we're going to need to suspend the rules to get it in front of us. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Vice Mayor. I all right. Ask so, for suspension of the rules. All right, so Council Member Allen has moved to suspend the rules to get this late file resolution before us. Is there any objection to suspension of the rules? Seeing none, rules are suspended. Council Member Allen, you're on your late filed resolution. Now I'm back to committee reports then. Now you're back to committee reports. Council Member Welsh, uh, Human Services. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Human Services voted 640 against to recommend approval. All right. Thank you, Council Member Welsh. Council Member Allen, you've got the other one. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance recommended approval. 11 in favor, zero against, and I move for approval. All right. So Council Member Allen has moved for approval uh, for passage of the late file resolution, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the late file resolution for passage say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, resolution passes. <clears throat> so, okay, so we are now ready for uh, bills on introduction and first reading. Uh, does anything need to be pulled off? Um, it looks like um, item number 65. Councilmember Toombs, Bill 2021-925. That's right. <clears throat> so uh, apparently Rule 17, there is um, somebody's uh, a signature is missing. So that'll just be bumped off of the, um, the, uh, the consent agenda. We'll come back up, and then I think what we'll have to do is just defer it. Okay, or suspend the rules to get it in front. Okay, so we're bumping item number 65, BL 2021-925. Anything else needs to be bumped off? Okay, so that's the only bill. Um, um, so everything else uh, except for item 65 will take up at one time. No objection. We'll consider all other ordinances on first reading and one vote at this time. Motion to adopt. Got a motion to adopt. Uh, properly seconded. All those in favor of all bills on introduction first reading say aye. aye. Opposed? No. Um, bills on introduction first reading passes. We're now on item 65. This is BL 2021-925 by Council Member Toombs. Murphy and Young, it's an ordinance to amend the GIS system street and alley centerline layer for the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, bending an unnamed right of way in the easement off Old Matthew Road. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, I'd like to move to suspend the rules um, and provide an explanation if I can. All right, so Council Member Toombs has moved to suspend the rules. <coughs> um, what's happening is it's a Rule 17. We require people who are involved in this to sign off when it's, when it's a property matter. And everybody sign off except for one owner. So you're, you're asking to suspend the rules to go ahead and get it moved on first Correct. reading tonight. Is that right? Correct. I just explained the whole thing for you. All right. So, um, that's, uh, so that's why she's moved to suspend the rules. That's the motion. Any objection to suspension of the rules? Seeing none, rules are suspended. You're on your bill on first reading. Uh, Move for approval. Uh, Council Member Toombs has moved for approval on first reading Bill 2021-925, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. 2021-925 uh, passes on first reading. We do have two late filed bills. <coughs> this is on page 39 of my calendar. Uh, the first one is, um, by Council Member Hurt and Nash, an ordinance naming the county clerk's office lobby at the Howard office building in honor of Mike Taylor, chief deputy clerk of the Davidson County clerk's office. Uh, Council Member Nash, I'm going to come to you. The committee report. All right. Uh, so this would have been late, uh, a late bill. It would have gone to, um, uh, the Rules Committee, Council Member Vercher, uh, did this come before you? Thank you, Vice Mayor. Yes, it did, and there was no objection. 
Okay, and while you're standing up, do you want to go tell, tell me what happened with Councilmember Lee's bill? Uh, it was also a, a late ordinance too. Um, council staff indicated that they submitted it late and there was no objection okay. for that as well. That's what I was looking for. All right, uh, back to you, Council Member Nash. Uh, we're again on this late filed bill. Uh, you're recognized on the late filed bill. Uh, move for approval. Okay, so what you're doing is just moving approval for um, getting it on first reading. That's the motion. So these are, this is late filed bills on first reading. Okay, all right, I'm sorry. So, um, Council Member Nash, you just need to move to suspend the rules to get I it in front. Move, move to suspend the rules. I'm jumping ahead. All right, so Council Member Nash has moved to suspend the rules. Is there any objection to the suspension of the rules to get this matter before us on first reading? Seeing none, rules are suspended. Now, Council Member Nash, now you're recognized. Now I'll move for approval. Now you move for approval of uh, passage of this bill on first reading, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of this pa uh, passing this bill on first reading say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Bill passes on first reading. Thank you, Councilmember Glover, for giving me that look that clarified what I was doing. Uh, Councilmember Lee, uh, you're recognized on uh, the next late bill. This is an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws. Uh, by changing from RS10 to OL zoning for property located at Hobson Pike, unnumbered, approximately 115 feet southwest of Windcrest Trail. It's 4.0 acres. Councilmember Lee, you are recognized. Yes, sir. I am asking to suspend the rules to have this heard. Okay, so it came before rules, as Councilmember Vircher told us. Councilmember Lee is also moving to suspend the rules to get this matter before us tonight. Is there any objection to suspension of the rules? Seeing no objection, rules are suspended. Councilmember Lee, you're on uh, the late bill for passage on first reading. I'd like to ask to move passage. All right, so Councilmember Lee has moved passage on to get this bill passed on first reading. Uh, it's been properly seconded. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of uh, this bill on first reading say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Thank you, Councilmember Lee. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Uh, we are now on page 39 of the calendar. Uh, we have a consent agenda for bills on second reading. Uh, let me go through those. Um, item number 102, that's uh, 2021, 867 is on consent. 874 is on consent. 879 is on consent. 913 is on consent. 914 on consent. 915 is on consent. 916 on consent. 917 on consent. 918 on consent. And 919 on consent. Uh, 913 on consent. Uh, had a request to pull 913. Okay, so 913 is going to be pulled. <clears throat> Anything else need to be pulled off consent? Okay, so let me go through those. <clears throat> um, first bill up on consent, Bill 2021-867 by Councilmember O'Connell, Cash, and others. Ordinance to amend section 12.40.190 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws regarding night parking restrictions. Next item 103, BL 2021-874 by O'Connell, Toombs, and others. Ordinance authorizing the conditional abandonment of a portion of value 371, proving the acquisition of an interest in certain real property and improvements thereon, comprising a new alley and the granting of an easement above that new alley in connection with the development of project in Nashville. Um, 879, that's item 104, BL 2021, 879 by Henderson and Toombs and Murphy and Nash. Ordinance approving an agreement between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, acting through Water and Sewer Services and Piedmont Natural Gas Company for shared use of MWS Access Drive. Next item is um, 
BL, BL 2021-914 by Tomb Swara, Welsh, and Porterfield. Ordinance approving a contract between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, acting by and through the Mayor's Office and the United Way of Middle Tennessee to provide financial counseling and other financial education activities to low-income residents in accordance with the Financial Empowerment Center program model. BL 2021-915, Tombs, Van Rees, Suara, and Porterfield. Ordinance approving an agreement between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County through the Department of Parks and Recreation and Memphis Basketball LLC to allow parks to participate in the youth basketball program operated by Memphis Bas Basketball LLC. Next item is 917. Hold on. I'm sorry, uh, 916, BL 2021 916. Ordinance of providing an honorary street name designation of Billy Cheryl Way for a portion of 18th Avenue Street. Uh, 18th Avenue South, uh, by, that's by Council Member O'Connell. <coughs> uh, item number 112, BL 2021-917, by Council Members Roberts, Murphy, and Nash. Ordinance authorizes the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County to negotiate and accept permanent easements for the Neighborly Avenue Stormwater Improvement Project for six properties located on Neighborly Avenue, uh, BL 2021-918. Uh, by Council Members Parker, Murphy, and Nash, ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County to abandon an existing storm sewer easement for two properties located at 900 and 902 Dickerson Pike. BL 2021-919 by Rutherford, Murphy, and Nash, ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County to accept new sanitary sewer and water mains, sanitary sewer manholes, fire hydrant assemblies, and easement for a property located at Burkett Road Unnumbered, also known as Burkett Ridge Phase Number 6. Um, anything needs to be bumped off of the consent calendar on second reading. <clears throat> Can we get committee reports? All right, budget and finance, Council Member Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and finance recommended BL 2021-914, 11 in favor zero against, and BL 2021-915, 11 in favor, zero against. All right. Uh, Council Member Murphy, Planning and Zoning. Thank you. We had 879, 917, 918, and 919, and all of those were approved, 11 in favor, zero against. All right. Thank you. Council Member Bradford, you've got one, 915. Thank you, Vice Mayor. We did have BL 2021-915, um, seven in favor, zero against for approval. Okay. And Council Member Young, you've got uh, the remainder of them. I do. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, BL 2021867 was recommended 11 in favor, zero against. And BL 2021874, were all recommended 10 in favor, zero against. Am I the end? And I will move approval of the consent agenda. So Council Member Young has moved approval of the second reading consent agenda, properly seconded. Any discussion on those bills? Seeing none, all those in favor of the consent agenda say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt. Okay, we're going to go back and pick up the bills that were not on second reading consent. Uh, the first one is item number 99. BL 2021-784 by Council Member Parker. Ordinance amending section 17.36.680 and 17.36690 of the Metropolitan Code to expand the allowable locations of a detached accessory dwelling unit overlay district. Council Member Parker, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to defer this again for two meetings to the first meeting in November. All right, let me get a committee report from oh, Council Member you. Murphy, Planning and Zoning. Thank you. Are we taking both of them together? Uh, no, we're not. I think we looked at that and we said no. Okay. Yeah. Then uh, it was 11 in favor, zero against, to defer two meetings. Okay. All right. Thank you. Council Member Parker, back to you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to defer this two meetings, please. All right. So the motion is to defer two meetings. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt uh, deferral motion two 
meetings. Uh, we're on item number 100, also by Council Member Parker, Bill 2021-787, ordinance to amend Title 17 about change from CS and CL to SP zoning for properties located at 1505, 1509, 1511, 13, 1601, and 1603 Dickerson Pike, 1600, 1608, 1612, and 1616 Luton Street and Dickerson Pike unnumbered to permit a mixed unit development. Council Member Parker, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, uh, this is, I don't believe we have committee reports on this one at this point. Uh, you do, you got a planning and zoning, Councilmember Murphy. 11 in favor, zero against to defer two meetings. Okay, Councilmember Parker. And I would like to defer two meetings. Okay, you have an amendment on this, you wanna just hold it? I'm sorry, what, can you tell me which item we are on? We're on 2021-787. I have an amendment. Is that related to the materials um, 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 restriction? Yes, I'd like to apply that amendment. Um, you want to make sure that we have the right committee report? <laughs> uh, I, I believe that item Bill 2021-787, I think that the I'm sorry, I thought we were moved forward it is to approve 11 in favor zero against on 787 okay great okay that's what we were checking for okay i lost so. track on the on the parker calendar <laughs> <laughs> that's all right uh, so council council member parker has his own agenda on this one uh <laughs> council member parker you're on bl 2021 787 planning and zoning approved this measure correct you're on your bill there is an amendment what would you like to do um may i ask a clarifying question to planning Sure. Um, is, is the amendment, is that related to the yeah. materials um, designation? So the amendment, the only thing the amendment does is add a condition tying this bill to its companion material bill. That's, it only references that. Thank you. Um, so I would like to go ahead and uh, move that amendment. Okay, so Councilmember Parker has moved the amendment to 2021-787. Uh, proper motion, proper second. Any uh, discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor of the amendment to 2021-787 uh, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Amendment passes. You're on your bill as amended. Thank you. I would like to move to defer this two meetings to the first meeting in November. All right. So Council Member Parker has moved to uh, defer BL 2021-787 as amended um, for two meetings to the first meeting in November. That's the motion, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt. Uh, the deferral motion is uh, passed. All right, now we're also on um, BL 2021-791 by Council Member Parker. Uh, this is an ordinance to amend Title 17 by, planching, by applying a detached accessory dwelling unit overlay district to various properties located south of East Trinity Lane north of Douglas Avenue, east of Dickerson Pike, and west of Ellington Parkway. So in RS5, R6, R6A, RM15A, and OR20, it's 311.11 acres. Council Member Parker, you're recognized on BL2021-791. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Council Member Murphy, uh, Planning and Zoning. Double checking. This one is to defer two meetings, uh, 11 in favor, zero against. 791, that's it. Councilmember Parker, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, this is common refrain for me tonight, but I would like to defer this two meetings to the first meeting in November. <clears throat> so Councilmember Parker has moved to defer BL 2021-791 uh, to two meetings to the first meeting in November. Proper second. Any discussion on the deferral motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral uh, for two meetings say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion is adopted. Uh, we're on uh, item number 105, BL 2021-884 by Council Member Murphy and Nash. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County to abandon existing sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer manholes and easements to accept new sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer manholes and easements for property located at 4005 Utah Avenue. Council Member Murphy, you're recognized. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, committee reports. All right, transportation. Council Member Young, you're recognized. Transportation recommended approval, 10 in favor, zero against. Planning and zoning, Councilmember Murphy. We deferred one meeting 
And with that, I'm going to defer this. I just simply did not have time to, to review this one or my other abandonment. And so I'll defer that one as well. But this is deferred one meeting, 11 in favor, zero against, and that's my motion as well. Okay, so Councilman Murphy has moved to defer this one meeting, BL 2021-884, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of deferral one meeting say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, this bill is deferred one meeting. We're on item number 106, BL 2021-911. Uh, this is by Councilmember O'Connell, Withers, Evans, Allen, and a host of other individuals. Ordinance amending Chapter 2.100 of the Metropolitan Code pertaining to the composition of the Metropolitan Transportation Licensing Commission. Amending Title VI of the Metropolitan Code pertaining to the operation and regulation of entertainment transportation vehicles. Amending Section 0.9.20.020 pertaining to vehicle noise. Amending Section 6.75. 0.240, 7.24.040, and 12.54.210 of the Metropolitan Code pertaining to consumption of alcoholic beverages in vehicles. Councilmember O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to get committee reports, please. Okay, uh, we've got government operations. Councilmember Hancock. We had a late filed amendment. Should we speak about that now? Um, you can tell me what you did on everything in government operations. That's okay, fine. so we, <laughs> we'll tell you everything. There's so many things. There was a proposed amendment by Councilman Parker that was withdrawn. There okay. was a proposed substitute by Councilman O'Connell that with the late filed amendment, the late filed amendment was voted 10 in favor, zero against. And okay. with the amendment, the proposed substitute was voted in favor, nine in favor, one against. The bill substituted as amended with the late filed amendment. Okay. Uh, thank you, Councilmember Hancock. Councilmember Young, uh, can you top that one? Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Don't know that I can top that one. However, I will try. Um, we did not hear the amendment from uh, Councilmember Parker, so we did not hear, and there was not a motion on that. We adopted the late amendment, 12 in favor, zero against, offered by Councilmember O'Connell. We adopted Councilmember O'Connell's substitute, 11 in favor, one against, and the bill as substituted and amended, 11 in favor, zero against. How did I do? You did very, very well. Thank you, Councilmember. Uh, back to you, Councilmember O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I guess I need to uh, do a couple things here. I need to move a substitute, and then also need to suspend the rules to get a late filed amendment on, and I... I Happy to do those in the proper order. I think I think we moved the bill as substituted first. Yeah, so is the late amendment on the substitute? Okay, so let's get the substitute before us, and then we'll deal with the amendment. All right, I'd like to move the bill as substituted. Okay. Or, sorry, move the substitute. All right, so Council Member O'Connell has moved the substitute, properly seconded. Back to you, Council Member O'Connell, to consider the amendment to the substitute. All right, now I'd like to suspend the rules, please. Okay, so Council Member O'Connell has a late amendment. Our guest, do I need a committee report on that late file? Because it did go to rules. Yeah, you can, I guess you can do it either way, but we can, we'll try it this way. So we're having a discussion about whether you want to go ahead and pass, get the substitute in order. Yeah, and, let's and do that because if we don't get the substitute, the amendment won't matter. All right, so Council Member uh, O'Connell has moved the substitute on BL 2021. 911 properly seconded back to you for an explanation of the substitute thank you the the substitute uh just briefly uh it travels a great deal f distance from where the bill was as it was first filed we had a great and thorough review by metro legal lots of input from uh stakeholders industry and mayor's office um and basically it leaves it in a form where we um rather than uh, making a, a, a sudden and severe change to amplified noise. We give more authority to the TLC. Uh, we changed a little bit of the reform to add a couple members uh, to the TLC. Uh, it, it moves the effective date of the, uh, the TLC authority out to April to give some rulemaking uh, provisions and uh, basically, we're, we're setting the stage uh, to create a, a new permit process uh, whereby, B, whether through BYO or possibly also through 
something like a mobile catering permit, uh, we would we would look to sort of reset the way that alcohol works on these vehicles. So all those provisions are in the substitute and the late filed amendment basically uh, that I'm gonna request in a second gives us a little more space to get that bill and I'll explain that in a second. Okay, so let me tell you where we are. Um, Councilmember O'Connell has moved a substitute for BL 2021-911, uh, properly seconded. He has given you an explanation of the substitute. Um, and I think what we've decided up here is we're gonna deal with the substitute first and then, and then figure out what to do with the amendment. Uh, so we're on the substitute. Discussion on the substitute. Seeing none, we're ready to vote on the substitute. We're not voting on the bill, just the substitute. All those in favor of the substitute, say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Substitute's adopted. Councilmember O'Connell, you're now on an amendment to the substitute. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, here, I guess I would request committee report because we did go to rules with a late filed amendment. All right, so uh, Council Member O'Connell has a late filed amendment that he's gonna need to suspend the rules on. Council Member Vercher, you're recognized on Council Member O'Connell coming to you on a late filed amendment to 2021-911. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. It was heard before rules and there was no objection. Okay. So Council Member O'Connell, back to you for a suspension of the rules. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to acknowledge colleagues who helped us get through that because this bill uh, kind of had parts in three different committees tonight. So I appreciate uh, the collaboration there. Um, the late filed amendment is relatively simple and uh, part of the reason it was late is we are still awaiting some analysis from Metro Legal uh, and basically want to give ourselves some running room as we finalize the approach to the uh, the way we're going to regulate alcohol here in the interim. Um, and it basically moves the effective date of those alcohol provisions out to December 1st so that we would have at least a kind of uh, an approach known or at least anticipated about uh, the new permitting rules. So um, expect another bill to follow this one um, that probably creates one or possibly two approaches uh, to permitting for uh, BYO scenarios uh, among these vehicles, but possibly also, uh, as I mentioned, kind of a mobile catering uh, scenario that could allow uh, service directly on the service and sales directly on the vehicles, uh, depending on how would you know the model that is preferred by the operator. So we got a lot of good feedback. Uh, from the industry on this, and we're considering both approaches and just waiting uh, for Metro Legal. Wanted to have that analysis come back and probably get a bill filed before this was effective, uh, and that's what the late filed amendment seeks to do. All right, so uh, Council Member O'Connell, you're going to need to move to suspend the rules to get what you just explained before us. Yes, sir, I would like to do that, please. All right, so Council Member O'Connell has moved to suspend the rules. You heard what the amendment does. Is there an objection to suspension of rules to get this late filed amendment? Um, before us tonight. Seeing none, rules are suspended. Do you want to explain the amendment again? Or are you good? I think we're okay. Um, I encourage uh, colleagues to support. The council member O'Connell has moved um, an amendment. You've heard the explanation. Properly seconded. Discussion on the amendment. Seeing none, we're ready to vote on the amendment. The amendment is an amendment to the substitute. All those in favor of the amendment to the substitute say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Um, the amendment is adopted. So now you've got a substitute as amended uh, for BL 2021-911. Back to you, Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. And just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge, as we did in transportation and infrastructure this evening, we had uh, Amanda Smithfield and some students from Hume Fogg that you saw gavel us in. Uh, a few of them spoke in committee, and I, I just want to recognize the, uh, the youth participation in this conversation. Um, they spoke to our committee about wanting a, a peaceful learning environment, which I think is wholly appropriate reason for them to come participate in the public process tonight. Um, this bill is basically uh, a, a stab at regulating an industry that is currently unregulated in Nashville. Uh, many people in this room have participated in one or more of the conversations uh, about Nashville's destination status that have 
really sought to protect Nashvillians, particularly those just looking to get a good night's sleep uh, and avoid public indecency. Um, and that could have been any of the conversations about short-term rentals, about golf carts, about scooters, about pedal carriages. And now this is the time when we bring that conversation uh, to party buses. And I think for so many people, this is, I'm sure there are people that would like to wipe the streets clean of all of these vehicles. But I think uh, ultimately, as we've demonstrated in every scenario I just mentioned, you can get almost all of these activities into a place where they're tolerable, where people are able to operate an honest business and where the operating model uh, works with our regulatory authority, specifically in this case, the Transportation Licensing Commission, to have a race to the top rather than the current race to the bottom, uh, where we seem to be experiencing a, an effort to max out the number of vehicles, max out the inde indecency uh, and disruption that is occurring in the industry, and I think we can do better, and that's what this bill uh, sets out to do. The, the lion's share of the bill does establish uh, authority under the Transportation Licensing Commission. As I mentioned, there are provisions impacting alcohol. That Those provisions are intended to be temporary uh, and specifically even more temporary for the, the businesses that are already regulated at TLC uh, and as well as noise and the makeup of the TLC. Uh, we did have a good, robust discussion about deferral in committee. And I guess as ever, uh, if, if we're going to entertain a deferral in this body, I think the intent must be to do work to improve the bill in the interim, not just to slow down the discussion. Um, so anyway, at this point, I am encouraging colleagues to support the bill as substituted and amended, and I'll renew that motion. Thank you. All right, so uh, where we are, we're on bill 2021-911 as substituted, as amended. Uh, Council Member O'Connell has moved approval, it's been properly seconded. Discussion on the measure, Council Member Glover. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Just very quickly, I hope that no one will move to defer this, and I thank uh, Councilman O'Connell for doing the work here. He's exactly right. This is something that needs to have our attention to it, and so thank you for doing that, and I think deferral would be a bad move. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Council Member Glover, Council Member Swope, you're recognized. Call the question. All right. Uh, Council Member Swope has moved the previous question. We're not voting on the bill, just the previous question. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Previous question prevails. We're now voting on BL 2021-911 as substituted, as amended, for passage on second reading. Uh, again, Council Member O'Connell uh, moved for approval. It's been properly seconded, ready to vote. All those in favor of passage of BL 2021-911 as substituted, as amended, second reading say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Bill passes on second reading. Thank you, Council Member O'Connell. Uh, we're now on um, BL 2021-912. Uh, Council Member Allen, O'Connell, Suara, and Porterfield. Ordinance amending Chapter 2.213 of the Metropolitan Code to create a mechanism for the implementation of the inclus uh, Inclusionary Housing Incentive Program. Council Member Allen, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Uh, affordable Housing, Council Member Parker. Um, affordable Housing considered BL 2021-912. Um, we voted 10 in favor, zero against a two-meeting deferral. Okay. Uh, Council Member uh, Murphy. Planning and zoning. We also voted to defer one meeting, 11 in favor, zero against. All right, Councilmember Allen, uh, you got budget and finance. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and finance recommended a two meeting deferral, 11 in favor, zero against. All right. Um, and uh, I moved for a two meeting deferral with Councilmember the brief Allen has moved to defer two meetings, properly seconded. Any discussion on the deferral motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt the deferral two meetings. Let me make sure I know where I am. I think we've got one more left on second reading, Bill 2021-920 by Council Member. Mur Sorry. 913. Sorry, Council Member Hager. That's what I get for leaving for a few minutes. I get confused. Bill 2021-913 by Council Member Hager. Ordinance to amend substitute ordinance number Bill 2019-11633 to permit certain individuals with active permits to file with the Department of Codes Administration as of January 1st, 2022, to be eligible for short-term rental property, non-owner occupied permits. Council Member Hager, you are recognized. Uh, committee reports, please. Uh, government operations, Council Member Hancock. 
At the inaugural meeting of the Government Operations and Regulations Committee, we voted on Bill 2021-913 um, to defer one meeting, 10 in favor, four, zero against. Move for a one meeting deferral, please. Council Member Hager has moved for a one meeting deferral, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral for one meeting say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Meeting to defer one meeting is adopted. All right, I'm double checking again. Now I'm at item 115. All right, Councilmember Murphy and Nash, this is Bill 2021-920. Ordinance authorizes the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing sanitary sewer main easements, accepts new sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer manholes and easements for three properties located at 54, 5540 Oakmont Circle, 262 and 264 White Ridge Pike. Councilmember Murphy, you're recognized. Thank you, committee reports. Um, transportation, Councilmember Young. I think Councilmember Young has turned into Councilman O. Uh, Councilmember Roten, um, you are Councilmember Young for a few minutes. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. It was approved. Uh, Ten in favor, zero against. All right, uh, Councilmember Murphy, you've got planning and zoning. Thank you. We're going to defer this. Eleven in favor, zero against. And as I stated earlier, I have not gotten a chance to speak to these property owners, so I'd like to defer this one meeting. Okay, so Councilmember Murphy uh, is moving to defer one meeting, properly seconded. Any discussion on the deferral motion? Seeing none, uh, one meeting deferral. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Um, this bill is deferred one meeting. We're now on bills on third reading. <clears throat> there is a third reading consent calendar. Uh, item number 116, bill 2021-849 is on consent. A bill 2021 870 is on consent. That's item number 119. 871 is on consent. 873 on consent. 875 on consent. 876 on consent. 877 on consent. 878 on consent. 880 on consent. 881 on consent. 882 on consent. 883 is on consent. <clears throat> Anything needs to be bumped off? All right. <clears throat> uh, these are the bills on the third reading consent calendar, BL 2021-849 uh, by Sledge Murphy and others. Ordinance to amend the GIS system street and alley center line layer for the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Dyson County. Banning a portion of alley number 403 right away from 8th Avenue South to alley number 404. Uh, next item is... Uh, item number 119, Bill 2021-870 by Tombs and Gamble, Ordinance Approving a Documentary Film Agreement between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County and Eureka Entertainment, LLC. Bill 2021-871 by Tombs, Welsh, and others, Ordinance Establishing a Program for the Purpose of Providing Assistance to Low-Income Elderly Residents of the Metropolitan Government for the Fiscal Year 2021-2022. Bill 2021-873. Young, Tombs, Murphy and Nash, ordinance authorizing the acquisition of certain right of way easements, drainage easements, temporary construction easements, property rights by negotiation or condemnation for use in public projects of the metropolitan government, initially for purposes of the Department of Transportation and Multimodal Infrastructure, Licton Pike Bridge Replacement, BL 2021 875 by Tombs, Murphy, Nash and O'Connell, ordinance to amend the GIS uh, system street and alley line, center line layer. For the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Dyson County by banning a portion of Lincoln Street right of way from McKinley Street to alley number 1024. Uh, item number 124, BL 2021 876, Sledge Murphy National Connell. Ordinance to amend the GIS system street and alley center line layer for the Metropolitan Government by banning alley number 442 in an unnumbered alley right of way in easement between 17th Avenue South and 18th Avenue South. Bill 2021-877 by Tombs, Nash, Welsh, and Allen. Ordinance uh, approving a contract between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County through Department of Water and Sewer Services and Light Wave Renewables, LLC, for the design, construction, operation, management, and administration services related to photovoltaic solar facilities located at Central Wastewater Treatment Plant, Whites Creek Wastewater Treatment Plant, and Omahundra Wet Water Treatment Plant. BL 2021-878, Tombs, Murphy, and others, ordinance approving a participation agreement between the Metropolitan Government through Water and Sewer Services and Regent Homes, LLC, to provide public sewer service improvements for Regent's proposed development 
Uh, BL 2021-880, that's item number 127, Van Rees, Murphy, and Nash. Ordinance authorizes the Metropolitan Government to accept new sanitary sewer mains, sanitary sewer manholes, and easements for two properties located at 1101 Chadwell Drive and Chadwell Drive unnumbered. BL 2021-881, Bradford, Murphy, and Nash. Ordinance authorizes the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing water main and easements to re relocate existing fire hydrant assemblies and to accept new water main and easements for property located at one terminal drive, also known as B&A Garage B Phase 1. BL 2021-882, Hancock, Murphy, and Nash. Ordinance authorizes the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County to accept new sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer uh, manholes and easements for seven properties located on Rio Vista Drive. And BL 2021-883, Sledge, Murphy, and Nash. Ordinance authorizes the, Met the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County to accept new sanitary sewer main and a san sanitary sewer manhole for property located at 2176B Carson Street. Anything need to be coming off of third reading consent? Seeing none, all committee reports are in. I'm looking at someone, whoever's scheduled. Councilmember Allen was the first one I looked at. I just need a motion to approve the third reading consent uh, or ordinance consent agenda. Yeah, I move the third meeting consent agenda. All third right, so Councilmember Allen has moved the third reading bills on consent. Councilmember Glover uh, seconds. Any discussion on any of those bills? Okay, we're voting on the third reading consent calendar. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those no. Uh, third reading consent agenda passes. All right, we're going to go back and pick up the bills that are uh, were not on the consent agenda. First one is item number 117, BL 2021-862 by Council Member O'Connell. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from IR to SP zoning for properties located at 1212, 1300, 1302, 1304 Herman Street, and Herman Street unnumbered in a portion of 907 12th Avenue North at the northwest corner of Herman Street and 12th Avenue North, 1.79 acres to permit up to 250 multifamily residential units. Council Member O'Connell, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to request committee reports, please. All right, uh, planning is only, Council Member Murphy. Thank you. We approved as amended, 11 in favor, zero against. All right, back to you, Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I think we need to get the amendment on here uh, for third reading, so I'd like to move the amendment. Okay, so this is on Title 17, so you can amend. Um, Council Member O'Connell has moved the amendment, properly seconded back to you for an explanation of the amendment. Thank you. This is basically, we've all been, uh, I think anybody who's had a zoning bill in the past few Meetings has known that there have been uh, these materiality companions. We uh, basically to accommodate some timing at public hearing, uh, went ahead and amended uh, the materiality out. And that's why this is related to withdrawal of those bills on public hearing. So that is what this amendment is for. Okay, so Council Member O'Connell has moved an amendment to be able 2021-862 for the amendment, properly seconded. Um, any questions on the amendment? Any discussion? Seeing no, all those in favor of the amendment on 862 say aye. Opposed, no. Amendment is adopted. You're on your bill as amended. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move, as, move to approve as amended. All right, so Council Member O'Connell has moved 2021-862 as amended for passage on third reading. Properly seconded. Any discussion on the bill as amended? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve on third reading. 862 as amended, say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the bill as amended is adopted on third reading. We're on item number 118, also by Council Member O'Connell, BL 2021-863. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from IR to SP zoning for property located at 1301 Herman Street, at southwest corner of Herman Street and 12th Avenue North. 2.11 acres permit a mixed-use development, 2.11 acres. Council Member O'Connell, you're on your bill. Thank you, Mr. President. Same thing here. I'd like to get committee reports, please. Uh, all right. Planning and zoning. Council Member Murphy, this may be your last, your last one. It is my last report as chair. Um, so with that, I'm going to move to defer this so I can repeat the so report you're have some next. More. <laughs> all right. It was approved. Eleven in favor, zero against on the amended res or the amended ordinance. Thank you, Council Member Murphy. <laughs> Okay, so Council Member O'Connell, back to you. Thank you. I'd like to move the amendment. All right, so Council Member O'Connell has moved the amendment on 863, properly seconded. A discussion on the amendment. Okay, 
So um, the board just the board just went out. Uh -oh. um, so uh, my board just went out. So um, I can't see what's going on over here. I, um, I think my mic is still on. To much to your chagrin. Uh, well, I can fix that too. Uh, so. Um, Okay, so, <laughs> so I was checking on, I think we're on the amendment, correct? We, we are on the amendment. Okay. I did move it. I think I might have heard a proper second as well. All right, so um, we're on the amendment to 2021-863. Council Member O'Connell has moved the amendment. It's been properly seconded. Any discussion? I can't, that's what I can't see. I can't see if there's any discussion. Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the amendment say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Amendments adopted, you're on your bill as amended. Thank you, I'd like to move approval of the bill as amended. Okay, so Council Member O'Connell has moved approval of BL 2021-863 as amended, properly seconded. Any discussion? Thank you. Any discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. We're voting on 2021-863 as amended on third reading. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Bill is adopted on third reading. Uh, item number 121, BL 2021 872 by Council Member Stiles, Hurt, Sepulveda, and others. Ordinance to require masks be worn by all individuals in public spaces. Uh, Council Member Stiles, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I have an amendment. I think I want to move the amendment if I can before deferring that, deferring the bill. May I do that? Okay, so uh, Council Member Stiles has an amendment in the packet. It is a late filed amendment, so and I have to go to rule. Council Member Vircher first. Council Member Vircher, did this come before the Rules Committee? It's a rule suspension. It did not. Did not. Okay, so we're discussing it up here. Apparently, did not have to go through rules, but it does require a rule suspension. Okay, so um, Council Member Stiles, it has to, uh, you have to suspend the rules to get it before you tonight. It is a, it's on third reading, that's why. Um, is there, um, Council Member Stiles is, is, would like to consider an amendment tonight. Is there objection uh, to suspension of rules to get that matter before us? There is objection, there's more than two hands, so you can't get your amendment on. Uh, it can't be considered. Uh, so Council Member Stiles, back to you on BL 2021-872. Uh, thank you very much, Vice Mayor. I do want to defer this with a brief comment. All right, so Council Member Stiles has moved to defer for how long? I'm going to do an indefinite deferral, Vice Mayor. Okay, so Council Member Stiles, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. We gotta get through this. Council Member Stiles has moved to defer this indefinitely. Um, properly seconded, back to you, Council Member Stiles. Thank you, Vice Mayor. So before moving for this indefinite uh, deferral, I, I did want to remind us that section two of the Metropolitan Charter authorizes the Metropolitan Council to pass all ordinances necessary for the health. Uh, Council Member Stiles, um, say again where you were. Okay, we're on a, a motion to defer. Can I not make a comment? Okay. Go ahead. I move for the definite deferral, Vice Mayor. I, I, I couldn't even hear what you said. What? I said I move for the indefinite deferral, Vice okay. Mayor. So Council Member Stiles has moved to defer indefinitely, properly seconded. Uh, any explanation on the de indefinite deferral? Okay, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the indefinite deferral say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, this measure is deferred indefinitely. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. All right. Um, and that, I think, completes our calendar. Uh, Council Member Hurt, uh, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I just want to um, note to uh, my colleagues that NES has placed these little booklets on your desk. They are launching its Power of Change initiative that we unanimously voted for. And it's also um, approved by the mayor. And uh, may I have your attention, please? Hold on, we're, on, we're through with the calendar. Councilmember Hurt. Okay, 
And these booklets that you have basically talk about the Power of Change initiative that you can pass out to your constituents because it's going to start January 2022 that their um, electric bills are going to be rounded up from zero one cent up to uh, 99 cent. And it's going to be used to provide some assistance to those who are in desperate need of have heating and electrical um, services. So just wanted to let you all know, pass these out, put it on your websites or your newsletters and let the constituents know that it will begin January 2022. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Council Member Hurt. Anything? All right, um, I believe that's it. I need a motion to adjourn. Aye. Motion to adjourn, properly seconded. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. We stand adjourned. So the council has completed a less than four hour meeting tonight. That's uh, a good bit shorter than we were thinking. The council agenda tonight was 51 pages long and involved 130 pieces of legislation. And that included uh, 40 uh, zoning bills. And normally the public hearings on zoning uh, will take a while just because of the numbers of them. There's not a consent calendar on those. But they managed to get through the, z the, uh, the zoning hearings uh, in a little over an hour, which is probably a record for that many pieces of legislation. Perhaps the number one thing the council did tonight was uh, uh, see a bill to reinstate a mass mandate in all public spaces in Nashville to be deferred indefinitely. It's basically dead at this point. The council at this last meeting had approved such an ordinance on second reading, getting the 21 votes necessary to pass it on third. But obviously with uh, virus cases declining, hospitalizations declining in the city, they probably lost some of those 21 votes for approval. In fact, one of the council members, uh, Bob Mendez, a large member who voted for it uh, two weeks ago, said if he thought these numbers continued to go down as he thought he would two weeks ago, he would not be voting for it. And they didn't get a chance to even vote on it at all as far as I was concerned, other than to defer it indefinitely, which I think most council members were, were fine to do that at this point. Perhaps one reason we could find out Councilman Stiles, Council Lady Stiles, who was the sponsor tonight of the bill, was trying to put on a late amendment that would have ended a mass mandate after 85% of the county was fully vaccinated. Uh, that quickly got a lot of objections. It's pretty much clear at that point that the bill was probably not going to pass in any form, and so she indefinitely deferred it. Council also had a number of appointments to deal with, 20 appointments and reappointments to various cities, boards and commissions, also elections that the council had to put some of their members on the city's planning commission, the traffic and parking commission, and the audit committee. That took some time, particularly for the industrial development board. They had three vacancies on that board the council had to elect. That took three different uh, voting. We actually took almost as much time taking care of all those particular uh, appointments uh, than we did doing the uh, votes tonight on the planning. Uh, the council also approved another controversial bill on second reading. In fact, they did it uh, by voice vote without dissent. Uh, putting in some additional regulation, at least on second reading, uh, that would uh, regulate the downtown uh, party buses downtown, the tourist entertainment vehicles that are in the downtown, a lot of controversy about those. There's some state law that seems to prohibit any, re any local regulation about that, but the bill tonight would uh, make a comprehensive makeover of the city's oversight board that regulates these tourist vehicles. Uh, Right now, under the bill, it would ban the possession or consumption of alcoholic beverage on tourist uh, entertainment vehicles that aren't fully enclosed. But the uh, sponsor tonight indicated he may be bringing an additional bill that would change that further to allow a different kind of consumption uh, that was going to be regulated. There was a, a lot of Hume Fog Magnet School students here tonight. They were in favor of this. They have to put up with the noise and they say the safety issues that go on down there because of these party buses and they wanted to see some action. They stayed here probably later than they probably get their homework done and probably also stayed later than they probably planned to tonight since we still have past 10 o'clock or so when they finally approved that. So uh, it was interesting to see that go through and those, those uh, youngsters down here trying to get those things done and being involved in the, in the local government. They were here earlier in the night to testify before some of the council committees. Council also approved a number of resolutions that uh, they, that would have appropriated different money f uh, for things going on with the coronavirus. They also uh, did defer uh, a contribution from a, a group in affordable housing. Uh, the, the Congress group was going to give $2.5 million to the city's Barnes Fund and a half a million dollars to go to a still not formed nonprofit uh, entity to benefit Wharf Park. I'm not sure if that's going to be a temporary deferral or something else. Uh, the council also uh, deferred doing anything on the 
detached accessory dwelling units. They're allowed in some parts of Nashville. They wanted to expand the zoning distance for this, but this is going to need some more study to get the, the votes for it, so it was deferred again. The council also deferred uh, another bill in the affordable housing area that would have allowed in, an inclusionary housing incentive program to be built. Again, there's some other legislation about that before the council, too. That was deferred again for some additional work to see how they could get that worked out. Bill did, the council did approve on second reading a bill that would uh, uh, basically ban any on-street parking for any vehicle with a length in excess of 20 feet or a dump truck of more than 4,000 pounds of gross weight to park on any street or alley within the jurisdiction of Metro between sunset and sunrise. This is an extension of a current law that basically uh, didn't allow that to happen downtown, but they've been continuing to complain about these large vehicles being parked in neighborhoods, and so the council feels like, at least they're moving forward at this point, that bill passed on the consent calendar to do something about that, what's been going on in other parts of town. Council is now in recess until the, Octo the 19th of October. We'll be here at that, at that time to provide live coverage. Until then, I'm Pat Nolan, and good night from the council chambers. Tonight's meeting in the Metropolitan Nashville and Davidson County Council has been coming to you live from the council chambers at the historic Metro Courthouse. It's been a public affairs presentation of the Metro Nashville Network. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.com.